Well, Monster High has a bunch of stupid puns, like uh, New York is called Boo York, you know? Amazing. I want one of the Monster High girls just to say, stick it in my boo gina. That's... You're going to say boo tea, but that... Uh, it's, yeah, that come on. Damn, that's, <laughs> that works better. <laughs> oh, shit. Toki ghoul, but yeah, you guys want to record? Uh, do we have to? <laughs> like, I um, thought we would do... I thought we could do something a little different today. Like, hmm. like maybe we could play a game of Yu-Gi-Oh or something. Whoa. We could play Tetris. Yeah! <laughs> I had this fucked up idea for a Tetris, like a, a grimdark Tetris, essentially. Like, the, all the blocks are replaced with humans who've each died. And, like, every time you uh, d d get rid of a block of humans, uh, it tells you who these people are, what they died from, and stuff. Wouldn't it the scarier thing be, like, they're real live people and then they get, yeah. like, completely... That's no, this, this is the afterlife and they're just vaporized. Oh, dude. Dude, it's like the Candy Crush uh, bit from... Uh... Emoji movie. From an emoji movie? I mean, emoji movie, yeah. Well, inside out the emoji movie, they're both just these equal hack chicanery, so. Yeah, we're all fucking hacks down here. But yeah, you guys ready to start the podcast? Let's do this. All right. I'd like, I'd like to think James has a bit more integrity than us, but, you know. Yeah. He's got a million <laughs> I mean, subscribers. He, um, James, you are on here, so, you know, like, I'll leave that to your own. That's discussion. true. I was going to yeah. say, you're giving me too much credit. We're always in our clubhouse getting high. It's the Rebel Taxi Pizza Party podcast on www.youtube.com forward slash pan pizza rebel taxi slash a f z document six b eight. Who are you people? Oh man, that's so that's so like rememberable. Like I'm, I'm glad <laughs> yeah. they, they made those really catchy. I'm yeah. I'm, a, I'm on a file on the dark web. Oh that's she. If, if you if you download me, you can. Uh, get an app that allows you to download weed on your phone oh uh, yeah whoa over also the phone 12 viruses 12 whole viruses in a row yeah i, re I remember it's random one never the same one when you re-download it well, one thing that always stuck with me is in the show arthur like they were watching some sort of james bond ripoff movie and they were saying remember the movie where that james bond guy uh emailed himself to the villain's lair that was crazy and that always just stuck with me. Like, how how did he email himself? <laughs> That's say the Willy Wonka technology from but, the. Oh, possibly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's almost it, pan pan. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it almost sounds like that's the joke. Shut up, Nolan. It's just like that's just. <laughs> it made me think a lot. Just like he emailed himself to the <laughs> president. If actually. I mean, uh, would you have the technology to like get your brain into a bunch of ones and zeros, email your the the code of the ones and zeros, and then re-download it into someone else's brain? I mean, that's Johnny Mnemonic, you know, if anyone remembers that movie oh. with Keanu Reeves. I think. It, it, Whoa. it reminds me of like uh, when uh, Eric Andre like says, "I don't need to go up to the microphone." I have a Star Trek transporter, uh -huh. and as he's being transported, he wipes his face and it gets fused to his like with his hand, and it gets fused to his face. And then they can't screaming, beam him back, beam him back. And they beam him back. And he's just like a pile of mush going, so how'd I do? <laughs> it's, like, it's like a mouth with an eye and it looks horrific and it's hilarious. Oh, no. <laughs> but we have a guest. Who are you, person? Oh, who, me? Yes, you in the in the back. Could it <laughs> Hello, I'm I'm James from <gasps> The Odd Ones Out. Oh, James <gasps> from, oh, my God. James <laughs> Rolf, the angry video game nerd. Holy crap. No, I'm I'm the it's not that one. Oh. Not the cool James. Oh. The less cool James. Well, oh. James from Are Pokemon. You the bored James. No, just not not even James Bond because just just Damn. like the the fifth the fifth most cool James. The so, so. there's a raking. Like like, like there's a leaderboard. <laughs> Every, so, mm -hmm. so we got the third most cool James. Fifth, God, this fifth. podcast really does fucking suck. Oh, <laughs> well, we tried, but he has a million subscribers, so I think this is technically the most famous guest we've had on. Actually, uh, I was just checking today. Uh, I have more subscribers than Leafy, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, oh, snap. <laughs> Fuck you, Leafy. I don't know Should who I that is. is. I'm old. <laughs> right, me either. <laughs> hey, Keemstar, what's up? <laughs> but 
I'm so out of touch. You guys wanted to talk about some YouTube drama, and I was just like, who are these people? I don't know these people. <laughs> I'm surprised you can be on YouTube without hearing the drama. Like, what do you even watch all day? Uh, game videos, cartoon Car- videos. Uh, cartoons, because, cartoons because he has, like, a jo- he has a job reviewing cartoons for little I mean, babies. Yeah, I, I don't like to uh, <laughs> follow anyone that has more subscribers to me because I, I feel inferior to them, you know? <laughs> That's yeah. so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> am I joking or am I serious? Okay, I've never heard. okay, but Pan, to be to be like perfectly honest, you're inferior to pretty much a ton of people, Aww. regardless of subscriber count. So I don't think you really need to worry. Oh man, not again. Yeah, you're not allowed to talk in Stephanie's voice when you're playing yourself. Shh, look, that makes no sense. This is my kink. Just let me have this, okay? No, stop. You go. Stop oh, it. Oh, oh. I'm still 100 percent sure that like you made a Let's Play channel exclusively just so you can expose your kinks to like little kids, <laughs> which <laughs> is just to ahead. publicly embarrass yourself. In front of... <laughs> okay, just for the record, just so everybody here knows, in case they're like odd ones out fans who don't know fans <laughs> would know. <laughs> I'm That's sorry. <laughs> yeah, should we? Yeah, we're sorry for that. Number one, but number two, Pan literally made a let's play where he just starts crying. <laughs> that was a Toy Story one. That was a classic. <laughs> was it because of the game? Was the game oh, that good? I talked about this one girl who at a college. I saw a girl with a Ruby Gloom T-shirt, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this girl has like obscure cartoon tastes. She knows Ruby Gloom because that show never aired in America, only in Canada." And I was like, "Hey, girl," and we we got along, and then I asked her out, and she 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 laughed at me saying, "Ha, huh, really, Pan? You need to date a nice girl." And then yeah. Okay, so yeah, understandable why you would cry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, and then on the podcast, I was talking. I mean, on the let's play, I was saying like, yeah. So I started crying while masturbating, like typical every night. You know, shouting her name, uh, Cindy. I know, I know, odd ones. I know, odd ones out is a uh, um, mostly family friendly channel. But oh, if you are whoops. an odd ones out fan. Click off now. <laughs> <laughs> no, th- that's no. My fans are cool, there's right, n- guys? And then yeah, <laughs> there's no escape. <laughs> there really is no escape when you're friends with a uh, pan. It's he's just like a black hole. Yeah, I mean, there's people who who said like, "Oh my gosh, you're the exact same person online as you are in person." What the fuck? Wasn't that your girlfriend? Shh. Anyway, next Cindy? question. <laughs> it, was, it was also like uh, he he's a black hole with blackheads. Oh, Ooh, gross. Rude. I know. That's anyway, not nice, Noel. So, uh, so how does how does this work, Pan? Like, how does Ooh, this podcast hey, work? Hey, that's true. Odds ones Walk out. Walk my hand through it. Well, who Hello. are you? What do you do on YouTube? I'm glad you asked. I uh, I make animations on YouTube. I I call them animations, but they're more like animatic slideshow type things. Yeah. I don't really lip sync. Uh, but yeah, people like my cartoons. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't blame you for lip syncing because it's the worst part of any. Oh animation. yeah, I no no. I don't like lip syncing. Have you ever thought well, of just like you know like covering the character's face? Because I thought about doing that. Just the <laughs> ma- what the mouth area at least. That's what I thought about doing. Just making a man. Like I'd have to be very creative to like go through a whole video with like their mouths covered. Like you know how in cartoons when they're trying to censor out like someone's someone's private parts, they like put a flower or a cloud yeah. in front of them. Like I just do that for my mouths, but I have to be like very creative about it. You could, oh god, that's, that's don't have, take this the wrong way. It's completely a joke, but you could put a dick in your mouth and then it's <laughs> the entire time. No, you're right. Ooh. Okay, I was gonna. I, I follow what you're saying. Yeah, I, I was just, I was just taking the two things together that you brought up, <laughs> the two examples, put them together, boom, got it. I you mean, uh, okay, for someone who has not seen your videos, odds ones outs. Uh, who, which video would you recommend them watching? My, a lot of people associate uh, my Suabway videos Suabway. like with me. So I, yeah. I made a video about my first job working at Suabway, and I call it Suabway just as a joke. And uh, people still send me pictures of them at <laughs> Suabway, like, look where I am. Yeah. And I'm always like, under those, I'm just like, okay. And uh, yeah. Um, but I, I would say, like, usually my, my most recent video are the ones that I would recommend is because usually the most recent ones are the ones that I like the most. Yeah. Because I, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know if you can relate. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just like, oh, that's old. That's not me anymore. Don't look at this that video. up-to-date stuff, yeah. That was I just have, a phase. 
if I actually one of my first videos I saw of yours was the Dark Crystal uh, childhood trauma one, which was I yeah. really liked. Th that video, I found I, that I like video that too. I found that video personally insulting because you say um, you are editing a twenty three minute video review, which is typically how my video reviews go, and you say twenty three minutes. How can you not hate yourself after editing all this? And it's like <laughs> I do that every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Personally I attacking know. people. Good. Like, whoa. I like this. Ouch. But yeah, I editing think... editing is a lonely job where it's just like, how do people live yeah. like this? What the hell? Because I always wonder editing. like what it'd be like to edit like a real full on movie. I wonder, I was always curious how to, how that would feel like. Well, like I, I feel like editing out of like all the things as far as like making videos for it's like it's not so much hard. There's definitely like a personal style you have to get down, and timing is very like you know crucial but that's not really a skill set i think it's like one of those like design elements that you just kind of figure out as you go mm -hmm. i just feel like editing is more time consuming yeah it's not hard work. it's time consuming yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true i get excited for editing i don't oh, yeah. i don't when the entire spectrum of stuff that i end up doing editing is like cool i can knock this out this is gonna be great I, although whenever i do whenever oh. i do a live action video i always uh really I enjoy editing those more because the footage is already all there. I just have to cut it down yeah. instead of like starting from scratch and making the, the video. Up. Oh, yeah. I mean, the worst part about editing is like, oh, crap, I need footage of this thing. Uh, how do I get HD footage of this thing uh, to the Pirate Bay, I guess? Sure. Don't say that! Shh, the <laughs> the Blu-ray Bay, because that's where they sell Blu-rays that I'm going to rip. You mean, you mean you purchase the movies and buy them, yeah. right? That's what you... Pirate Bay is just and, a place... And then illegally download them. After the <laughs> yeah, like if you own the Blu-ray... Yeah, if you own the Blu-ray, you should be entitled to a free download off the Pirate Bay since you own Actually, it. Actually, so... you do. I do? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that like uh, owning a DVD, you don't own the movie. You own the license to use to, to view the movie. Hmm. Um, so that's why – I, I might be completely wrong, but I've been told in the past <laughs> that like emulation, like video games, yeah. if you own the original cartridge – it is not illegal for you to download a or, or use a ROM because you already own the license to play the game. Hmm, yeah, um, that's true. So it might be the same way as far as movies go. If yeah. you already own it, you've already contributed. You know, yeah. you already did your thing. So Yeah, I, 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 I paid money for my used copy of uh, Kangaroo <laughs> Jack from, from uh, Half Price Books. I don't have to pay anyone anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, I could have had the chance to get the One Piece uh, for kids dub, and I didn't have the money. Damn. the time so now i have to illegally download that and i'm worried four kids is gonna sue me <sighs> they're dead well they're not dead they're still around but they're on life support basically they, they rebranded themselves to 4k entertainment J james have you seen uh uh the, any four kids dubs or you mean like the pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh stuff back in the yeah. day yeah <laughs> yeah no I've, I've like grew up on that yeah I remember uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Gi -Oh! GX was like a, a big a big meme show where they just didn't care and they were like, you know what? Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series is popular. Let's just rip off that. Yeah. Really? I don't know. They, I actually That wasn't out at the time. No, it was. Wait, well, okay. Well, no, Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged came out way after. Like, I remember I was way after my Yu-Gi-Oh! phase that I watched that. Just watched it later. No, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! The Abridged Series came out in like 2005 or six, and then... Uh, GX came out around the same time. Oh, okay. G so GX was trying to do like the dub thing, the fan dub thing, the go like the ghost stories dub, yeah, type what? deal. Okay, so like I see a lot of people in the comments section, like we don't talk about the four kids One Piece, and I'm like, okay, the four kids One Piece is awful in the sense of it shouldn't have been made. But once you have that, once that's been delivered, it's really hard to go back. Yeah, like I, I it's it's a magical thing. I love it. The the, the rap, you know, yeah, 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 it's amazing. <sighs> I mean, not only that, not only that, but Funimation fixed everything in the saga. So who cares at this point? Yeah. Let's enjoy the the terrible one, four kids one piece for what, what it is. One plus, I could do a really good Sanji. One change I feel justified is like they turn like this gun that they were ho in the first episode. They had this gun held up to this pink haired kid's head and they turn into like this like spring loaded hammer. They, they turn the gun into a spring loaded hammer. And I feel like I guess that makes sense in the One Piece universe. I guess that works for this. That, edit. Might that would have been fine, except the it was a very obvious, terrible edit. Like the drawing was awful. Yeah. Okay. First of all, that was in like the second or third episode. 
second. That, that was not in the first. Yeah. And even then, they they still had real guns later because I'm pretty sure they had the real gun in the flashback with Shanks. Mm-hmm. Shit. <laughs> I guess and, they didn't want to edit that too. Well, even later in the chopper arc in Alabasta, they just said screw it, and all they just recolored every gun green. Shh. Didn't they like well, cut no, out like they, a? They, ma- was, they were supposed to be like super soaker. That was the idea. Yeah. Well, no, because because they, they did edit a lot of the guns into water guns, but then randomly they just gave up on adding the top little water part, and then they just made it like this like translucent green color, <laughs> like it, no design change, just recolored it in this fantasy james, world i guess that makes sense like a water gun i guess james um, do, you, do you remember all the stuff they would do like um in Yu-Gi-Oh? when they had guns they would just have uh, them pointing at kaiba <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i was I'm, i don't remember what much about Yu-Gi-Oh, but i remember in pokemon just the the jelly donut thing i know that's infamous but the the jelly donut rice ball the oh yeah <laughs> did they uh, this, sell jelly donuts in a uh, subway i mean just cookies Oh man! Well, they, they're tech. Oh, well, to some people, jelly donuts would be cookies, depending on what dub you watch. Or they just turn into sandwiches, oh. like Subway. <laughs> no, but that, <laughs> yeah. that was the weird thing in the in the One Piece dub. They actually reference rice balls, and I'm like, what? 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 Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so I'm a huge One Piece One Piece fan. So, I, so I apologize if I like jump in here and try to correct things. So, yeah, they removed rice balls completely in the show, except for once because they wanted to make a, a vanilla rice joke. What? Yeah, they call me Mr. Rice. Right? No, no, they, no, they're like, uh, look at me. They call me Vanilla Rice. And that's it. That's the only reason why Rice Balls are still in the show. Oh, my God. I don't get yeah. it. It's Vanilla Ice, silly. Oh. Yeah, vanilla, yeah, Vanilla Ice, like, go ninja, go ninja. Like, kids are going to fucking ninja, get what the fuck Vanilla Ice is in 2003. Mm-hmm. I was about to say that, like, taking out the yeah. Rice Balls, that's, like, such an American thing to do. But leaving in one rice ball to make a vanilla ice joke, that's, like, the most American thing you can do. What the like fuck? If, you know those Tumblr memes where they have, like, the, like, um, uh, it's, like, uh, God, I don't know. What, what do you describe them? The meditation pose things? The the chi? Yeah, the yeah. Oh, yeah. The expand, yeah. Expanding yeah. brain? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, uh, changing um, rice balls into donut cookies is the first one. The second <laughs> one is that. And then the, the mind exploding with enlightenment is <laughs> leaving them <laughs> Just to make a vanilla rice joke. Somebody make that. I, I I can't find a blank template for that meme, so somebody make that. <laughs> except no, except the very first one is I'm um, leaving rice balls intact because it's not that difficult to comprehend. Right. Oh yeah. So I, my, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you. Oh, I just want to do my Sanji impression from the show. Please do. Go. Yeah. So um, I, I realized I could do it pretty well, but it's like, Rup Roast Wrecker, Tenderloin, Slash. Hey, Chopper. <laughs> These donuts are great. Jelly-filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut. These donuts are great. Jelly-filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut. Oh, you, you also said like Dino Mutt. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like so close to being like just a uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bullwinkle. Oh yeah, that's that too. Yeah, I didn't say I could drive him well. <laughs> yeah, Rocky and Bullwinkle. That I feel funny. bad for poor kid Sanji because even though he didn't do a good job, like he straight up had to quit voice acting because Aww. he got so much backlash. Aww. Well, his name's David Moo. His name was David Moo. His name was David Moo. His name yeah, your, was David name? Moo. It's such a beautiful name. His name is mm-hmm. David Moo. That sounds like that sounds like a character you would come up with, James. Like, I met this guy <laughs> named David Moo. And then yeah, he would, he, he would and be and a cow. Him, yeah, and then you would and yeah, and he would draw him as a cat like a guy with a cow mm-hmm. head. Tell us your wacky cow stories, odd ones out. Um, I made this comic a long time ago. This is this isn't a true story because it happened in heaven. It was a comic what? of some uh, an angel. This is like I'm just trying. You said a cow story, and this is the first thing I thought of. Uh, there's this angel in heaven, and then a cow comes up to him. He's like, "Hey, do you remember me?" And the angel's like, "Uh, no." And the cow says, "June 23rd, 2011. Do you remember that hamburger you ate?" And the angel's <laughs> like, "What?" And then the cow's like, "That was me." And then the angels are like, oh, I'm sorry, man. And the cow's like, no, now you're going to know what it feels like to be eaten. And then Whoa. the cow just like starts sucking on his head. And it was, that was it. Whoa, it went just messed up. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know James was into bull. That afterlife story is more <laughs> messed up than my uh, Tetris afterlife story. Oh, no. 
Please don't. <laughs> well, I already talked about. I I, I was re- recording that part, so I can add that in. Please yeah. Well, that. do you do you okay? Let's, let's talk about the logistics of uh, hamburgers. Is it super insulting to put cheese on a hamburger? No. Since when? I mean, like, in, in, in like the sense of like you just you, the dead body and then the stuff that they create. Like it's like a double death sandwich. Um. And, no. And... No. You don't kill cows to make milk. You don't kill. No, no, oh, you're correct. Yeah. But it's like, but you, you, but you took something that they make and put it on top of them after they it, died. I well, think it might okay, be more okay. insulting. Look, it's like, it's like the Native Americans. You got to use every part of the buffalo. That's that's how Pixar does it. OK, OK. It's like, OK, let's let me put it to you this way. If a cannibal like took like somebody's seed, and, like spread it on a human burger, like would that be wrong? I, I, any, any cannibal is probably wrong. The cow's dead. It was whatever, you know. <laughs> well, I, I, love, I love, I loved how silent it was. Everybody, I, and, and it wasn't like an uncomfortable yeah. silence either. It was like a hmm. It was like a legitimate moment of thinking. Like, is that wrong? I think, I think it would be wrong if you dipped the hamburger in milk. That would be wrong. I mean, I'm gonna do that now, oh, just, just, just to mi- spite the cow. Damn. Wait, wait, but why, why dipping <laughs> in milk? Bad. But the the product from milk placed on top of it's not. Milk is just cow jizz. Yeah, <laughs> you're all you're all it. drinking cow semen. Just yeah, like, oh. that's true. I want also let's note that the very first joke in the Power Rangers live action movie was a a guy jerked off a cow. That was the very first joke. Oh in that yeah, movie. the the well, technically every Power Rangers thing is live action. So you know. Oh, the, sorry, <laughs> I'm so used to saying that on this on this show. <laughs> <laughs> the the 2017 Power Rangers movie, the first joke was, hey, you suck that cow's dick or something. It's like, no, it's a bull. No, it's a cow. Or, I don't I don't. Well, no, the, the know. joke is, oh, man, she's really aggressive. Or he's really, or, yeah, no, she's really aggressive. Uh, that's weird. I just milked her. That's a, it's a, it's a boy. It's a, it's a bull. It's not a cow. And then, like, they, they, they have, like, this awkward look. They don't actually, like, address that he just, you know, touched a, a cow's penis. It's mm-hmm. just, like, or a, a how do you, bull's penis. How do, you, how do you mistake an udder for a bull's penis? That's, like, something <laughs> you have to go out of your way to, I, to mistake. I don't know, but, like, like, even the camera in this PG movie, PG-13 movie, pans down and you see the bull's penis on the camera, on the screen. Uh, on Power Rangers? <laughs> yes, I, re- I recall you saw a bull's penis I, on screen. I'm 100% sure that you just dreamt that and that you was, had some issues. It could be a Mandela <laughs> effect. Okay, people, if anyone saw the Power Rangers movie, did they show the the, the dick of the bull on screen? That um, reminds I mean, me of Freddy Got Fingered when he's jacking off the horse going, Look at me, Daddy, I'm a farmer! <laughs> yeah, that's classic. I remember when I did that. Yeah. That movie that movie is honestly something else. Yeah, what a great is, film. Is it still relevant to talk about Cool Cat? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Everybody loves He's, Cool Cat. Yeah, we had Adam on from YMS and he, yeah. he talked about how they're they they're kickstarting a new Cool Cat thing, but it's yeah. literally the same footage over and it's just minor edits <laughs> and that's it. Eight weeks yeah. ago, I I really wanted to see the Cool Cat Saves the Kid movie. I've I've seen people review it, but I just wanted to see the actual like source material, and I like was not able to find it anywhere. And now I, I really want to just see the movie. You got to buy the DVD. I know. Except Daddy Derek still owes me ten dollars. Oh. oh, you told me about this. What yeah. Do you want, do you want, um do you want to share that on the podcast or not? Nah? can i've had i've had my run-in with daddy derek before whoa okay is there literally a guy named Derry De- daddy derek it's oh, his nickname no. okay his and name is, is he in the Sa- leather community or like what's going on <laughs> i'm let, really confused by this. let james explain izzy all right okay, i have to go i have to start from the very beginning apparently there's this movie director i don't even like a filmmaker named derek savage and his his, his works are uh, it's a bit of an acquired taste and his one of his movies is called Cool Cat Saves the Kids. Am I going too far back? Probably. And it's an anti-bullying movie. And, you know, he's trying to make a movie. He's, he's, he's trying, but it's not that well made of a movie. You just need to, like, watch the trailer yourself. And people have made reviews of the movie, and they're very rude and mean about it. Aww. Not rude, but they were just mean to Derek Savage. And Derek went out and went out of his way and took those videos down. And then when that was happening, I made a video saying, like, 
Daddy Derek, don't do this. This, this is bad for your career. And then I did a review on one of his books called Midnight Stripper because he also makes books too. Oh and no, I nice. forgot. Yeah. And oh. then I made, I like, as in the video, I made a joke saying like, oh, I'll make you a new cover for one of your kids' books because he has kids' books. And so I made him a cover for Bible Birdie. <laughs> and so there's like a picture of Jesus and a bird on a on Bible, Bible Birdie. Bird cover. Let's see the cover that he has right now. What? But I made him a new one. What's Bible Birdie? It's a, a, fa- a faith-based kids' book to teach kids about the Jesus or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What. And then, <clears throat> yeah. Just said, "I'll pay you ten dollars for making this cover," and I said, "Sweet." And then he wanted my the this midnight stripper video taken down and i said (laughs) and i said no no deal and then he still never gave me the ten dollars for doing the cover is he using the cover damn using the cover okay he's using the original composition of the cover technically he can't even like give you the 10 bucks he promised what the fuck yeah not not only that but like he he literally just took James' cover and he photoshopped like stock images over it. <laughs> oh, hang on a second. That's look amazing. up Baby Birdie or wait, Bible Birdie. Okay, here, here I could probably find it. I could probably find it. You have to like look on his official website, ah. which is just web design to the max. By the way, his official website. <laughs> if you guys remember the uh, um, Space Jam website, it doesn't look nearly <laughs> as good. Oh, <laughs> he made a website worse than uh, freaking the Space Jam site. You bet your sweet baby. Bible birdie. <laughs> okay, first of all, the Space Jam website is a national treasure. <laughs> so it's not They almost like got rid of it. Bad. They almost Did got they? rid of it. No! Yeah, it was, that needs to be preserved. It was, yeah. it was taken down. No! <laughs> it was taken down? <clears throat> no, it's Jam. still up. It's still up, thankfully. It's, it's but... there. It's there. Whew. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. History is preserved, but the, the moment <laughs> Space Jam 2 is announced, you know... That that site's gonna be updated. Oh God! What if they do? What if they just update that website? No, that's <laughs> like you know, that's like George, the George Lucas thing, where it's like you can't change history. You're, what are you doing? This is this is disgraceful to Space Jam's history. Like they keep talking about, like, hey, we're gonna make Space Jam too, and it's like just make it already. Uh, like Le- I don't know who was announced to make it. The uh, uh, was it Charlie? Who, I don't know. Charles some, Barkley. I think Charles Barkley or some. No, other... LeBron James. LeBron, LeBron James. James. Oh, because he had a shitty cartoon already. So well, I guess oh, this will okay, be. Okay. First of all, someone's like, Jesus Christ, is he's praising crap. And I'm like, obviously, it's ironic. Like, I'm not like, oh, man, this is the greatest <laughs> website known to man. If you can't tell that, I'm scared for you. Yes, Brinkle Butt 99. Y- y'all, y'all, need, y'all need to realize how sarcastic and. Like, yeah, jokey. We are. You gotta understand. Yeah, okay. no, nothing we say is sincere. We're all just freaking hack frauds. Just I, like... I could, I could literally say 9/11 never happened. If I'd be joking, guys. Yeah. Just so you know, 9/11 was an inside job. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Really? So if you want to talk about horrible website design, MIA. That the girl that did the 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 song where it's like boom, 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 ching, ching, whatever. Is that Black Eyed Peas? Like, mm-hmm. No, MIA. Gotta uh, get that. Just... Gotta she get was a that. rapper that did the fly like paper, get high like planes, that song, mm-hmm. which would have been, I think it's the actual title. I should have just used that instead of trying to do the sound effects. <laughs> uh, Try to sing uh, it for us. Her, sing it for us. I, you have to sing no, it. Sing I it. got that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, she had a website in like 2009 that she designed herself. And it's literally every piece of the website is an animated like neon colors, GIFs. Whoa. And it is literally the worst thing I've ever seen. And and I was taking a graphic design class and the, the guy, like the teacher told us to bring in bad design, you know, just to, kind of like as a show and tell thing. And I won because there was nothing <laughs> worse. <laughs> this sounds like my web comic. Oh, yeah. Pan. Wait, Pan, you have a web comic? Shut up, Nolan. What? Wait, what is it called? Like a, a lucky IRL or yeah, something? Yeah, that's what it's called. The season, like the first issue was just like all neon colors where everything is neon. And I thought... I don't know. I, I had the stupid idea of like if everything's neon, nothing is. It won't look bad. Yeah. <laughs> do do you when you made your first comic? Did you think about how important it was and that that's your first comic and that when people click that first button like on your website, like that's what they see? We're all fucked. So kind of. I mean, like 
you know, no, who's, whose webcomic starts out good, you know? That, and that's the whole point, yeah. Yeah. When, when, I was, when, I was, when I made my first comic, I was like, this is it. This is going to be the first step. When people click the first button, that's, like, that's going to be the comic they see and how I started. And I hate it, and it's terrible. Uh, Just like all, can, everyone else. Is. You can change the homepage so it like goes to the newest page. Or... Oh, yeah, I know, I know. But then you you click on first, just like out of curiosity, you know. Don't you like look at other people's first comics? Oh yeah, yeah like Bleed Man. Oh, oh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sh- James, I showed you one of my first. Com- I've showed everybody here one of my first comics. In fact, me and Robo Buddies, shout out to Robo Buddies. Um, we did a video co- covering my first comic, like one of my first comics ever made. Mm. It was uh, called Jungle of the Forbidden. Homer Simpson gets wrapped up in it. Oh, uh, Gwen and I Nolan break up. Yeah. It, it's really Didn't, intense. Weren't you, wasn't that like a self-insert of of like you dating someone? or? Yeah, me dating Gwen Tennyson from Ben 10 Alien. Oh, why do so many people <laughs> want to bone Gwen? Why anyone from Ben 10 in general? Okay, okay. actually, I'm going to I'm gonna be... At that time, I, um, Gwen was not like at all... I was not at all like sexually interested in her. Right. My thought process was... <laughs> No, my thought process was if I have her in, I could have her break up with me and cause drama. So I literally put her in the comic just to have her break up with me for drama. I literally cucked myself. <laughs> That's the dream. That's what I do all the time. I, Hong Kong. I don't know how to. Re- th- that might be the path- most pathetic thing I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got a weird humiliation have, fetish, so you know. No, it's so. Izzy, are you saying I've outperformed Pan in cringe? maybe i'm I'm sure like i I was half expecting pan to be like no 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 i have worse stories and like (laughs) i mean like i mean if you i I haven't uploaded any smut but if you see the smut i do it's pretty self-humiliating well i just use stephanie to humiliate myself well this wasn't even for smut purposes this was just so i could have someone break up with me in the comic oh okay (laughs) which is pretty depressing all things considered yeah we're all depressed i i don't i don't know how to react to this (laughs) It's, it's great. I, yeah. Oh, but okay. You could make it worse if it was Omniverse Gwen. <laughs> oh, that oh, I like Omniverse's design. I'm, I'm not gonna bone them, but I like the designs. No, I love the, the the design theory on Omniverse. I'm a big supporter of Omniverse. I think it looks a hundred times better than Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. Easily, just from the cinematic view, um, the creative designs with all the background aliens and everything else. Um, but. Gwen's design after she goes to college is one of the worst things I've ever seen, ever. I fucking hate it. Oh yeah, Does, she doesn't like she nerd. look like a lolly or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so all of a sudden she like cuts her hair short because because it's weird because Omniverse has this weird mentality where they were trying to like go somewhere between Ben te- the te- you know the original series and Alien Force and make it into something new. So Gwen all of a sudden starts dressing like she's ten years old again <sighs> and gets these really ugly glasses. And it's just, I, I don't know, it's just like, I really love the evolution that Gwen had up until that point from uh, Alien Forces, like, you know, very professional, uh, dressed, you know, like, you know, looks like someone that hits the books very often and is very serious about a future, to the spellcaster we got in the future episodes. This <laughs> blimp, that this crappy 10-year-old lolly crap did not match that, and it's such a weird derail, and I hate it. Okay, but to be perfectly honest, how are we not sure that it wasn't just um, fan bait? I, Let's be I'm, real. It, it could have been Derek J. White being like, "This is what I'm into." I don't know why that's the voice. We, voice we're not gonna we're not gonna put words in Derek J. Wyatt's mouth. But then again, <laughs> we're not exactly sure what he is putting. In, so we'll just say that. Yeah. Sorry, I just I never liked that design. I lo- I even like Frank and Cre- uh, Kevin. Like I, I enjoy that design a lot. I mean, uh, I, I, I think back to when John Kay was blogging about uh, Gwen and saying, like, her forehead is so big, she should be a Fox News anchor. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know. I, I don't know. John Kay's cray cray. But James, did, James, did you see uh, any Ben 10? Or? Uh, no, that's why I've been quiet this whole time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you never right, watched I, any Ben 10 when you were young? No, I wasn't into that. You, or I didn't watch Ben okay. 10. Okay, Jay, I'm going to link you. I'm going to link you to a picture before she goes to college and after she goes to college. All right, I'll give you my my yeah, opinions. Yeah, you're, you're, you're unbiased, <laughs> just seeing it for the first time, <laughs> fresh eyes. Okay. They both look terrible. Oh. Yeah, I'm looking at I mean, the, They both have things too. that work for them. What's that? 
I mean, I said they both have things that work for them. That's not one's not like drastically worse. Like the new Scooby Dooby, the Scooby Dooby, the new Scooby Doo redesign. Uh-huh. How like everyone looks terrible in that. Oh I think. yeah. <laughs> so 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 Gwen, uh, why why are you still wearing cat shirts? Huh, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> because her ten year old self did. Oh well, you you what? You can't a college age girl can't wear a cat shirt, huh? No, it's just it's just it goes against everything personality wise that she's been building up hey, towards. You know, she know. can dress. However, she wants is he, you know? Oh, pan, sure. Pan, okay. Pan, she pan, don't. If I didn't, pan, if no. I didn't know any better, it sounds like you're, uh, you're uh, into something. Into what? Oh shit! Oh no! <laughs> oh. Okay. Into what? I mean, Gwen's. Mm. I don't I'm, like Gwen. She's. Mm, she's mm, mm. Mm. Also, I love. I love the image you linked. How she has like inflated kneecaps. Oh. A little bit. <laughs> oh. That's, one, that's one thing about. That's one thing about Jared. Style. That's the one thing I don't like about it, is that all his kneecaps are super pronounced and like bigger than they should be. Hmm. Well, okay. So one of my favorite things about uh, the whole omniverse conversion style thing was um, a lot of people were like, "Oh man, they brought this Derek J. White in here. He's ruining everything." And like he's been working on this show since the very beginning. Like like he's been a designer. He's you know he's he's been a designer on like um, that kind of era of things since uh, the original Teen Titans. Mm-hmm. So like I know that's not like the same show, but you, you could see where he kind of like migrated between shows um, as it, to get to that point. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of an issue with like, the, well, not an issue. I just still want a Transformers animated Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated and Ben Ted <laughs> Omniverse crossover. <laughs> I don't know. Too bad you get Secret Saturdays. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, that was that's what I was gonna say, James. If you didn't watch Ben Ten, what kind of Cartoon Network shows did you watch, or did you jump off uh, ship at a certain? Well, so growing up, my family didn't have cable, so I oh, was yeah, one of those. Right. Yeah, uh, you watch PBS. Yes, there was this one show called Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. The fuck that is that? I was really into. Oh boy, it's it was like a mixture between animation and had like live action parts. It was like a game show with kids in it, and they'd have to go out and do adventures and like learn about science or whatever. There's also Cyber Chase. Do you guys know uh, Cyber Chase? Yeah. yeah. I used to like I that think, show. Yeah, that was about math and and other science stuff. I think like all the PBS kids would try to like teach morals and like lessons and stuff. Remember mm-hmm. Zaboomafu? Whoa, 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 whoa. I, 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 Cyber Chase for a moment here. Mm-hmm. It's guy Gilbert Godfrey playing a parrot again. <laughs> yeah. That's the only <laughs> thing memorable about that show. Do you I just want I want to believe that Gilbert Godfrey was typecasted. Oh <laughs> no, that's his persona. Oh, what's Gilbert up to? Gilbert going to furry conventions as his persona. I wouldn't be surprised. That's something. That sounds like something he'd do. Do you think Nick Cage has a persona? He it's he seems like he would. I mean, it's he'd be a it, sloth. His son is like into anime, so I'm sure he, he convinced him to like, hey, hey, dad, check out this fursona. It's like, wow, son, that's so cool. I should get one. Something like that. Do you yeah. think, um, do you think like, um, Cage's son goes to furry conventions and he's just dragged along? Was it? No. Oh, no. I was <laughs> thinking of Gene Simmons' son who was into like, m- who had as a manga and like all the manga things are like ripoffs of like bleach and stuff. All the drawings. He literally traces bleach. Ar- he literally traces bleach. <laughs> ar- that was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, careful what you say about Gene Simmons. He'll try to sue you. Honk, honk. Hey, Gene Simmons. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, Gene Simmons, you stop buying the trademark on stupid stuff. Yeah, but um, you guys want to get into it. Wait, the... no, wait, he bought the trademark on stupid stuff? <laughs> well, not literally stupid stuff, although that's something he oh, would fuck. do. Now I can't say anything anymore. I could Shit, ruined. fuck you, Gene <laughs> Simmons, you whore. But um, you guys want to get into the news? Uh, do you not want to talk about some Mubafu? Oh, the Crap Brothers? <laughs> the Crap Brothers. That was their name, right? I think it was the Crack Brothers. It's the Crack Brothers. While walking in the woods one day, Chris and Martin saw something strange. A little leaping lemur who liked to bounce and play. They followed their new bouncing friend. Not knowing where this adventure would end, the animals were headed just around the bend. Where are they going? I don't know. How did they get there? Come on, let's go. There's the crap. I, I think now they're they're technically the crackhead brothers. They're not doing so well. 
I mean, they were mm-hmm. talking to lemurs for a little bit there. I would question their... Yeah. Uh, oh, man, it was so obvious on Zubumufu when they had, like, a puppet of Zubumufu and, like, a real-life lemur there. It's like, I, like they ain't fooling care. me. I know what no I'm saying. No shit. No <laughs> shit. At least it wasn't, like, crappy CGI instead. Like, sure. they got, like, a real lemur. That's cool. This is PBS. They don't have that money. They probably stole that lemur off like a hey, zoo. PBS is sponsored by viewers like you, so if you have a problem with it, go donate to them, asshole. <laughs> Some millionaires. Guys... Huh, what? what? What, James? I was going to talk about the you, – you said that they were produced by viewers like you or whatever, but they also had like just one commercial for each thing, and it was Chuck E. Cheese and Juicy Juice. <laughs> Those are like the two things, the two commercials so, that were on so, every single PBS show. So oh, yeah. Chuck E. Cheese is also sponsored by viewers like you and Chuck E. Cheese. And, no, wait, mm-hmm. PBS is sponsored by viewers like you, Chuck E. Cheese, and Juicy Juice. Juicy Juice. Hey, did you guys uh, watch Zoom? Oh, yeah. Come on in yeah. Zoom. Come on in Zoom. Come on in Zoom. <laughs> oh, making Zoom? No, I don't think so. All those kids are old now and dead. Zoom is, is Zoom is like a show that's been going on since like the 70s. Like the 90s, right? I think the 70s. Yeah, for a long time. It's not the show. It's not the movie with uh with the guy who has superpowers and all the kids. That's too. not the stupid Tim Allen movie. That, that's the, that has like three Smash Mouth songs in the first twenty minutes. Surprisingly, I'm not kidding. So. Hey, um, hey, how do you know that? I wa- I was watching Tim Allen's Zoom. It was like a superhero sh- movie from 2005, and like like yeah, I was watching on Netflix, and it's like wow, they have three Smash Mouth songs in the first 20 minutes of this movie. <laughs> Smash Mouth is popular, okay? It was like this is come back. like come on, Shrek had two in the span of the entire movie, but this has three in the first 20 minutes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Why do we do this? Why do we compare movies like that? Like sh- like Shrek is somehow like the academic standard? It had Smash Mouth in it. That's it's very all helpful. about pacing, Izzy. Name another oh. movie with Smash Mouth. In the Digimon. court of law. Digimon. <laughs> yes, they did. Okay, they name that. another movie that has more than one Smash Mouth song. Atop the fourth wall of the movie, the first cut. <laughs> that don't count. That's not the public release. That's temp music. By I'm court sorry. law, Smash Mouth can only be used as bookend songs in oh. the movies. No longer more. Oh, what about Baja Man? We can we can use Baja Man. Can you move it like James, this? Can I'm pretty sure James. Like I'm pretty sure James uses a Smash Mouth theme song for Let's Play Channel, right, James? Do you? <laughs> yeah, all the time. The the odd one gamers is that right? The odd one gamers. Play- yeah, with featuring Smash Mouth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like with guest stars like the Game Grumps. Oh, can you move Speaking of like games, let's this. talk about Cuphead. Can ah! you shake it like oh, that? Can you move <laughs> it like this? Can you Good shake segue. it like Shut that? Shut up, Pan! Yeah, Cuphead. Talk about Cuphead. I Cuphead? Didn't, I didn't get to play it. Did you play it? Yes. No. I played like the first level. Shit. I, I, I played the first <laughs> uh, couple bosses as well, and it's fucking mm. fun. So, like, I'm so conflicted <laughs> right now because I, I, I have this, like, mentality that my computer is a, a workstation. Like, I don't like to corrupt it <laughs> with fun and game. So, like, I can't get the game because I don't have an Xbox One and I don't want to oh put it on God. Steam. Indulge. Just play the game. Do you Just play the game? On your, on your, do you have Steam on your work computer? I, I did once because I wanted Roller Coaster Tycoon really bad and then it didn't work. I paid for it and everything, and it won't load. No, oh, sad. Well, I mean, which ro- was it? The original one? Or yeah, the- yeah. Okay, so I was gonna say if it's the make, you're better off. I was, I was more of a zoo tycoon kid. Anyway, Cuphead. Yeah, it's so Dude, pretty. What if Cuphead mm-hmm. had cheats like Zoo Tycoon did? Well, like big he- big cup head mode. Um. <laughs> Big cup head. No, like you could spawn in like a bunch of cup heads. Oh shit, like 40 <laughs> player online PvP matches. Everyone, no, like they have like 40 players on screen at once and you just kill each other <laughs> trying to kill the boss. Yeah. Oh no, that's what I was talking. Um, my friend Spo bought the game, played it together. And I said, dude, you know what would make this game awful? And he goes, what? And I go, friendly fire. <laughs> friendly fire. No, that's not Battle Toad. Hell no. Fuck that shit. So I, want like, so, I want someone to mod Cuphead and make Friendly Fire a thing. That'd be hilarious. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Um, no. However, the game is so pretty and so well mm. made, and it's only 20 bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, this was in development for you. Like, someone brought up one of my podcasts from, like, I think our second podcast where we br- mentioned, pod- <laughs> mentioned uh, Cuphead, and it's like, wow, it's been in development that long. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, but it looks, yeah, it, it just perfectly replicates that uh, tw- 30s Fleischer era of animation. It's like, how do they do this? This is so accurate. The, By only, the, way. the only thing they couldn't do was uh, the 24 frames per second, I think, or uh, I don't know what old uh, frame rate cartoons were. Hmm. They were 24. Oh, okay. I just didn't know. But yeah, I, I wish they had a mode for that or some kind of setting because I know 60 frames per second makes the game better because it's easier to play, but I do just want to have play one level in 24 frames. I, I want uh, Cuphead to go into, like, uh, a, J- a Japanese level, and it's just full of racist cartoons, and he's like, whoa, and I'm, I'm going to walk out of here. See ya. That'd be messed up. I love that. I would, um, yeah. Jason JJ's 17 says Fleischer's did 12 frames, not 24. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess they, did, they used 24. each frame twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, technically, like anything that's put on TV, um, I, I mean, it might be changed now that TVs are getting higher frame rates, but technically everything's 23.98. So. Yeah. So, haha, shut up, Jason. Uh, just uh, kidding, I love you. But yeah, that makes sense. They probably, because uh, a lot of the Flesher stuff wasn't theatrical, right? So, um, I know theatrical movies were 24 frames per second, hmm. and then anything else on TV ended up being 12 because everyone was trying to cut corners and I save wanna... money. I want to see an animation at 60 frames per second, like 2D animation. How insane would that be? And right, how impossible? Uh, load up Cuphead. <laughs> no, yeah. that, that's that, that's not how that works or does it. It's like it a, there's like there's like a thing you can do in After Effects where it'll try and draw the frame in between. That, so you can sort of sort of emulate like you could turn something that's 30 frames a second into 60 through After Effects. That sounds like it be terrible i remember seeing the a one a scene from one punch man in 60 frames a second it was a fight scene and it like it looked we it was weird to look at definitely like something was off but i kind of liked it hmm, i gotta you see that. Like that if you can see it yeah yeah i'd love to see that we gotta i'll link it if i find it but i i would imagine it'd be like some sort of yeah. morphing technology where it just like morphs in between frames which mm. would just look terrible yeah um yeah yeah so speaking of design and looks, I've been really thinking about it. I've been looking at Cuphead and Mughead for a while, and I feel like Mughead's the better design. What do you guys the think? The blue one? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. They, Maybe. I mean, the they're only both difference cute. is the I think nose, they're both really, cute. really, in the color. Well, no, there's a there's a huge difference between their face. Oh. Uh, Cuphead has, like, these giant half, like, circled eyes that take up 90% of his face. And then little mm-hmm. tiny dot nose. And mm-hmm. then um, Mugman is, like, way more closer to what a character in that era would look like hmm. with a big nose and the That's classic f- uh, eyes. Hmm. Maybe. Straw's not bendy. Who knows? Yeah, Straw's not bendy as well. Yeah. Uh, bigger nose. And also he's blue. So, the you know. straw is his yep. dick. <laughs> we, I mean, we were this close to not make for Cuphead because it deserves better. <laughs> but, you know, Pan, if you want to ruin it for everyone, that's fine. Yeah, fun. Cuphead. I, I, well, I don't get to play Cuphead. I don't have an Xbox One or a gamer PC or a regular PC, so it's like... I don't think you need I don't think you need an intensive PC. I got a Mac. That's the thing. Oh. oh yeah. there it is. Good luck, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Cuphead. More like Cuckhead, am I right? Because he's getting cucked. Hey, guys, if you want to if you want to play games, good luck with your stupid Mac. Ha. Hey, hey, I got, I got some emulators on here. I got... Uh, Bendy and the Ink Machine. That's 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 from the same era. That counts. Okay. Speaking of that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's, so let's let's have a talk about Bendy and the Ink Machine. Well, I got uh, choice words. I got I got a couple of things <laughs> I want to say. First of all, between Cuphead and Bendy, I don't necessarily go out looking for porn. Like I'm not like a type of boy. <laughs> I, but I, I, yeah. love, I love that we're starting this. <gasps> I, I was but say, I have, have seen so porn. much porn of these 1930s characters, and I'm just like, why? Why is this like the big hard on that people have right now? Okay, let's be honest. Everybody on the internet has terrible taste in porn. This is a fact. You think you have good taste? No, you are objectively wrong. Everybody on the internet has bad taste in porn. So, like, I mean, it's pretty obvious that they would go for something that looks awful and dumb in <laughs> porn. Well, and and so, like, it's to the point where I did my first Not Safe for Work commission that's actually Not Safe for Work. Like, I know I've done, like, a couple of things for yeah. you, Nolan, that's wrapped. But that's not really not safe for work. That's just, that's it's true. like, it's an innocent kink. You can put that in this display, and unless people know, they won't know, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so, like, I, I've drawn Bendy bending over my friend for, oh, like, oh. a better turn. <laughs> hey! Yeah. I mean, 
I think it's just the internet and people have very, very wide senses of, of kinks and fetishes yeah. that, that, you, that you may not understand, but you just go, all right, man, you do you. I think about that time that I think it was Lazy Game Reviews or some other YouTuber who uh, turned on like a who activated like AOL, like an old AOL trial disc and went on America Online's chat rooms and tried to find one of the active chat rooms because everything's offline, but there are some home custom chat rooms, I don't know, and they, they have people in them, but they're all just like people saying stuff like Daddy Dom looking for Twink or whatever, <laughs> stuff like that. Just... It reminds me of when uh, they uh, would put uh, like video numbers in video games and video games nerd would be like let's call them let's see what happens and they were all porn lines yeah, phone numbers <laughs> the phone numbers that they would put like yeah that was so it's such a bad idea just like eventually that phone number is gonna run out and it has and now they're porn I don't, lines a lot of a lot of game developers don't think long term though they just think oh this will be cool in the moment and then like 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 D drm games like oh that'll be cool in the moment. hang and on they like yeah but, it'll be cool but for me 20 years from now, it's not going to be cool, is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah like, fuck games. Fuck videos. Yeah, fuck them fuck all. Cuphead. Do, do you guys watch any uh, speedrunning? No. Nah, Very rarely. I'm not a nerd. I don't watch that crap. I remember I remember the uh, Super Mario 64 half A press meet with uh, TJ Yoshi. Oh, me. yeah. <laughs> I'm buddies with him. Are, are we talking about the, about the building up speed for 12 yeah. hours? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know how that's a legitimate tactic, though, for speedrun. Oh, man. You guys remember <laughs> the – what was your first speedrun video? Because I remember in, like, sixth grade, this was, like, 2003 or four. like, my teacher said, guys, you should see this video online of Super Mario Brothers 3. Some guy played through it and beat everything, and he just wrote down the um, thing on the chalkboard, well, the dry erase board saying HTTP <laughs> dot dot slash slash something www <laughs> dot blank dot slash something something, and he said, if you want to see it, go look up, look that up, kids. That's crazy. And I found the video. Right here. The I have the video right here. And it's called Super Mario Bros. 3 Time Attack Video. This was before speed run was a term. It was time attacks. That's what they used time to call it. That's what it used to be called. <laughs> yeah. but Whenever yeah. whenever I want to do something very quickly, like if I want to like go grocery shopping, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm crunched for time. Instead of saying, let's go fast, I say, let's speed run this. Yeah. Dude, James, I didn't know you were a true gamer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how the cops think of your uh, speed running on the highway. <laughs> and yeah, instead of heavy in heavy rain, when Ethan has to drive into traffic, what if the lady on the uh, GPS thing said, "Ethan, if you want to save your son, you have to speed run the highway." Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, yeah, heavy rain's a joke. But anything more things. about Cuphead? I think it's really cute. I love it, yeah. and it's really fun. And I would wrap Cuphead and Mugman. Yeah, please release it this. on the PS4. Thank you. Or Let's not. hope they do. That'd well, be nice. I don't. Okay, so most likely, if it became an exclusive for one console in this era, most likely that means Microsoft bought bought the company or paid for the development of it, and that's part of their agreement. Like, there is no reason for any company to make their game exclusive to one console at this point, unless they are affiliated with that company. Yeah. Okay, well, I, my counter-argument is the uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider was paid for, um, help was helped funded by Microsoft, too, but they paid for, like, a timed exclusivity deal, which could be Cuphead is going for, too. If they were going to do that, wouldn't they have announced it? already well no they didn't announce it for tomb raider um like tomb raider's port was announced way after the fact i think okay i mean because yeah. like uh cuphead's one of those games that's like t uh hat and time um and a few others that feel very much like they would be at home on the nintendo switch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet mm -hmm. they're not because there, there's so many of these games that are like you know influenced by classic nintendo stuff the disney afternoon uh cuphead you have uh you uh not, ukulele has it that came on the wii u i think or no no that hasn't came out nope. yet uh, so it's like all these games that haven't came out on the switch yet it's really bothering me because they feel like they, they they're so switch games yeah as yeah I, I i hate to break it to you but uh ukulele has never come on the wii u. i'm sorry oh no i know i have a switch now. it's cool no i know i'm joking i know uh dude you i i'm just kind of disappointed lately just like yeah 
keep a- keep adding keep adding uh, um, bundles of sticks or faggots as we Whoa, like to call them. To the, to the <laughs> okay, okay. So ac- apparently, um, someone said that Microsoft did fund the development of the game. Cuphead is its own studio. Oh. But, you know, you're right. It could be a time exclusivity. It just depends on how much, you know, the contract they signed and how much they gave, you know. Wasn't Cuphead yeah. kickstarted or no? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, I feel like I feel like I feel like we would have it would have been mentioned by now. We're like, well, Mighty Number no. Nine and Ukulele have failed. Cuphead has succeeded. Yeah. No, okay. Ignoring, okay. Yeah. Ignoring like ignoring like a shovel knife. Is Head in or... Time Out also? Yeah, it just came yeah. out. Okay. Because yeah, Head in Time is also kickstarted. Is it on too. PS4? Uh, it's on ps4 xbox one steam and that's it because i I checked had in time on psn a few days ago it's like it's not there but i see people playing it had in time psn hang on i'm i'm not gonna lie i i'm really happy for the success of the hat because i saw one of the demos of it and it looked like shit and it looks like it got improved a lot which i'm very happy that the team was able to do and stuff but on the other hand also uh their their pr team is kind of uh Kind of weird. Hmm. Yeah, they 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 do a lot of uh, a lot of meany internet stuff, and it's not like um, Sonic where it's kind of like ironic. This is the future. Take a Nolan. Moment. You gotta accept huh? it. You gotta accept I, the I future. Know I know it's the, I know it's the future, but I'm just saying they they're, they're like they're sort of like they're sort of like mimicking like early 2000s internet, which <laughs> I guess could be the point. Hey guys, waffles XD had a time. Apparently, that's um, what they do though. Had in time apparently uh, is not out for the PS4 yet. She. Uh, oh, okay, okay, so it's only out on Steam currently. Okay, when does it come out on PS4? Because I needs it. Fall. It is fall. We're in October. <laughs> it's uh, apparently later this fall. She. Bitch. Uh, and someone I'm... asked uh, why um, Cuphead's available on Steam and not and not just Xbox One if it's an Xbox One exclusive. I mean, that's something that they could fought for. You know, like when you go into negotiations with this, like, hey, we want to fund this money. Okay, cool. We can make this game. But like we can't have it exclusively on Xbox and they probably got like less of the money they were supposed to get or something. But I'm pretty sure they fought for Steam. And to be honest, if, if you're a PC gamer and you probably don't play console games, then, you know, you're not really losing in that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, well, for it is on Steam, though. So. That's what I'm saying. It's on Steam uh, because they fought for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and to be fair, who's going to use the Microsoft store? That thing is awful. I use it all <laughs> I, I try to use it to download like what Microsoft Word stuff, and like I keep getting these ripoff things, and like it's like, oh, you ha- you don't have to pay for this, and then later they're like, you have to pay for this, and you keep using it. And I'm like, what the fuck, dick. Yeah. So the Microsoft Store sucks. Don't use it. Yeah. Use us Steam for all your gaming needs. I am putting some codes in for a for my Xbox 360, some sort of like prepaid cards and some somehow they disappeared, and I was like, I want to play Alien Hominid, but no, it disappeared, and I was on like. I don't know, it was a big, huge mess, and customer service basically just emailed me saying, look, uh, we don't know what to do. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> don't so, talk- wait, Pan, Alien Hominid, that was that was on Newgrounds, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, Odd One's out. Did you ever go on Newgrounds? Oh, oh of course. God. I, I grew up on that. Oh, man. Well, like, what was your inspiration for Newgrounds? Like, did you have a favorite one? Uh, um, there was a lot of Sonic cartoons, you know? Oh. Mm-hmm. I remember like, there was the... the, the a big uh, collab Sonic cartoon. Hmm. Oh, the Sonic like, shorts? Yeah, the Sonic shorts. Sonic hmm. shorts were my jam. I loved those. I wanted to make one for the longest time. I can't. Hmm. When do you think Newgrounds was the funniest? Mm, around when like YouTube was still young. Oh yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. I don't know, Pan. It sounds like you know. Would you care to explain it to uh, us? Yeah. In, well, I... in great, in great, <laughs> long, annoying, awful, <laughs> unfunny, uninteresting. <laughs> Worn out, tired, boring, obnoxious, sickening, long, stupid, retarded. You know, I think awful Newgrounds jokes. was funny when we're all twelve, living in the suburbs, listening to Lincoln Park, watching Dragon Ball Z, drinking Pepsi while playing Halo Co-op on the easiest mm-hmm. setting during which we consumed Doritos and looked at paintball guns on eBay and an Internet Explorer connected through AOL on fifty six K Mono American Online free dial. Anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um you guys want to get into other news besides Cuckhead? Well, I mean, I mean, this podcast isn't going to be uploaded for two weeks, right? Well, it's still we got to talk about it eventually. So, we, I, 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 yeah. I guess. So we're going to talk about Rick and Morty and the uh, sauce. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Hey, odds one. Are you a fan of Rick and Marty? Of course, of course I am. They the the sauce thing. They only had they only gave out twenty packets, didn't they? Yeah, like twenty or yeah. thirty packets per restaurant. And my my town That's didn't receive silly. it. I mean, I guess I, it's my, 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 my go ahead. Hmm. I only had four stores that had the Szechuan sauce, and they they only had twenty packets. And so it's like, what's even the point? You'd have to like camp out like days in advance. Yeah, I mean, Which like people did. I know, <laughs> and like people. Um, well, you, you didn't. I don't think I saw any commercials on TV for the Szechuan sauce. So it was like, hey, it's. I may, I'm. Yeah, oh, it's more. It was. It was an internet culture thing, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I was like, I have two theories. One, like McDonald's was like, eh, let's do it for these fans, whatever. And two, it's like McDonald's knew it'd be huge. So they were like, oops, mm-hmm. uh, we sold out. We I can't believe it. We're so successful. We sold out, you know, like what Nintendo does where they pretend that they – where they just release a little – a small amount and they're like, whoa, we, yeah. we sold a bunch. We, you can't get this stuff anywhere. Artificial uh, – it's called artificial sc- scarcity. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, but but we knew that they only had 20 packets. Hmm. Was that like pre-disclosed? Yeah, they did the the little article thing I was reading said that. Because hmm. like there was just a lot of people who apparently did not hear that and only heard from word of mouth of, hey, they're getting, you know, for one day only yeah. you can get this stuff. And there's like people that traveled from Canada. Like like someone like really? flew in to the US to because the, oh, there wasn't no. any McDonald's <laughs> in Canada doing the promotion. Shit. Okay. Um what are you doing with your life? It's a <laughs> song. I can I can understand that. Make it at home. It's it's, it's like it's like it's not about the sauce. It's about the adventure. Yeah, it's about the oh. journey. Hey, hey, you James, know? shut up! Come on. <laughs> I mean, also, like, I'm looking at the packaging now because I had a discussion about this over breakfast, and like, um, it's very clear that the designs they did is like for the packaging of the sauce is to it's it's clearly inspired by Rick and Morty, but this is clearly not mm-hmm. a tie-in. Yeah, like this isn't like. Uh, Adult Swim and McDonald's together made this thing, so it feels very much like McDonald's. Like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna capitalize on this, you know, this this thing that happened on a TV show, mm-hmm. but we're not going to contact them and do like you know actual promotion for a it. Promotion. Or, yeah. yeah. So, I feel like I feel like they could have capitalized it a lot better by getting more sauce. Yeah, yeah I mean, like this should have been a month. Like this shouldn't been a day. This should have been like a month yeah. of it, like any sure. other special edition thing they do. Mm-hmm. McDonald's did do that. I totally would have gone and got some, but I when I saw that they only had twenty packets, I was like, "It's not worth. It. I'm probably not going to get any." Hmm. Yeah, I'm, you should have just walked up and been like, "Hey, I'm, I'm the odd ones out. I have like, <laughs> I have like a million subscribers. I have, Give me I have more subs than Leafy. Yeah, I don't know if this yeah. is true or not, but like, there's people who's been stabbed, who got into an argument and stabbed someone over the Szechuan sauce in L.A. But I don't know if that's true or not. I want to believe. I, well, I, I mean, I mean, to be honest, Rick and Morty fans are much more intellectually elite than we are. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're thinking on a different level. I, they're thinking on a different level. So it's probably justified that they stab somebody over a sauce. I heard you can buy Szechuan sauce from like Target or H-E-B yeah. or whatever. Like Isn't McDonald's didn't. Yeah. McDonald's didn't invent Szechuan sauce. That's not. It's, literally, it's literally teriyaki sauce. That's all right. <laughs> like, like, it, like it, it's a thing. It's not like something that McDonald's invented. Yeah. You know, exactly, like, yeah. like um, but it's a convenience. So, you know, you want to go to McDonald's and you want to get your Szechuan sauce too. You know. Okay. Okay. Here, okay, Pan. Here, how's this? For, <laughs> um, here's how. How does this work? You go into Target. You buy teriyaki sauce off the shelf. You're done in like 20 minutes. You camp out for days at Walmart to get a, I mean, McDonald's to get a packet. Okay. What's more convenient? We're fighting for our did, rights. You know, we need did, to. If we what don't, rights? Look, we just Rick, want the did sauce. Rick get, we want to get our did sauce. Did Rick get the sauce from Target? No, he okay. got it from McDonald's. Look, 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 look. Okay, imagine if like this, McDonald's said, hey, we're not going to serve ketchup anymore. You got to go to the store and buy ke- your own ketchup. You know, it'd be like that. You know, we want, we want it all in one place, you know? That's dumb. See, yeah, it is dumb. Like, who would go to McDonald's mm. and then have to go to, like, a, a Target to buy some ketchup? You know, that's dumb. See? See? <laughs> okay. I get, where, I get where you're coming from. But on the other hand, you're camping out for days for teriyaki sauce. Hey, we're, we're, we're changing the world. We could change the... Oh, oh, oh my God. Okay. How's that for intellectualism? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, so, so look at this. Look at this. On eBay... You can get um, an open version of the sauce for $60 Sweet. or 
you for a thousand dollars you can get the mini quote unquote poster that is the 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 thing that you rip off of the <laughs> the sauce packet. Oh man, for a thousand dollars. Actually, they're including the poster, so it's you know, I mean the the, the poster is. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's not, not a poster, it, Pam. It's, not a, it's, it's, it's it's literally the label that you rip off to dunk your n- nuggies in. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's it's being listed so, um, on eBay so people will pay, pay well, for it as a mini poster. Well, maybe maybe the mini poster has some Szechuan sauce oh, like shit. on the on the back, eighteen so bucks. You can like lick it. Rick and Morty. Well, this one has uh, the sample taste for sixty dollars with a pre open. Is someone used a syringe and like? sucked some of it out and i guess is selling individual little pieces of syringe oh shit i can buy oh some God. for 18 bucks sweet check that out Sheshawan sauce and i get the poster too hopefully didn't, didn't mcdonald's creators of rick and morty didn't they send them like a huge jug of it yeah from oh, promotion yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they sent them like one of those like um giant like you push the top of it and it squirts out yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you want to buy this Szechuan sauce, the one that comes with like a syringe for some reason? <laughs> I, just, I, I just talked about that, man. You know the syringe. In, inject it. Inject yes. it into your bloodstream. Yeah. Look, look at what. Look at the amount that's there. It's point. It's point zero five ml. Let's see. Best. Best of the worst. Fun fact. Pan is repeating exactly what Izzy said because he was not listening. I was going on eBay and I was like, I need to find <laughs> some of this stuff. I need to buy buy it while it's still hot. Oh, <laughs> speaking of which, okay. So that that like that that video you made uh, talking about the uh, Power of Four special for Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. And this is not me defending the special because it was awful. But like you literally mentioned. In the re- in the review that you barely watched it, okay. and then he started like miss misspeaking about events that happened in it. That was literally the worst video I've ever seen on YouTube. <laughs> literally, it was two the worst? guys, <laughs> one of them half watching it, and the other guy didn't even see it. Doing a quote unquote review, <laughs> the man with no facts versus the guy with half the facts. Look, it can't literally be poor, the worst video journalism. on YouTube. I mean, okay. It was so not good. Look, 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 look. I, when I was okay, I was just like watching it casually in the background, and like partially through, I was like, "Hey, wait a minute. Um, I should make a video on this." So you know, like, like you talk about how Mojo Jojo comes out of nowhere at the end, and it's like they set him up in the beginning. Yeah. Mojo sucks. Yeah, but you I'm, know, I'm cool with shitting on things, but it's just like. Let's uh let's let, let's actually like do factual stuff. Look, and I mostly ninety yeah. percent got that review right, you know. Right, right, sure, ninety percent. <laughs> that's fine, whatever. Just um, the mojo but, like, parts, you know. Actually care about Izzy, stuff. Izzy, and... Izzy, 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 it's alternative facts. Calm down. Whoa, <laughs> oh, no, it's just, well, it just no, really that's... highlights how much of YouTube is like this, like echo chamber. That's some. It doesn't matter humor. if what you're saying is factual or not, as long as people agree with it. And I know that's kind of all media, but it was just like really frustrating. Yeah, to we're all that. fucked. Yeah, wow, Nolan. Like alternative facts. That's that's really topical humor. No one's ever, you know, that's some witty social commentary. You know, <laughs> you mean like Newgrounds? Oh yeah, I remember when Newgrounds was funny when we're all twelve in the suburbs. Drinking Pepsi, playing Halo, call yeah, up on exactly. the. You can't do that twice. I can do whatever thank you, thank I want. You, thank you for self illustrating my example. Yeah. <laughs> God. So I'm I'm glad I'm glad we sort of uh, made made sense of that. You guys want some sauce? Uh, I'm sorry. It was just like a thing that like it it hit. Apparently, Nero's Ku made a post about your review. Now I need to like oh, find that well, and read it. No one is he still there? What's he doing, Nero's Q? Uh, Nero's, mostly Nero's critiquing just... people. Yeah, oh. like always. No, no, like he like critiques someone ah. for drawing their character too feminine. <sighs> Hang on, like, oh, I found his blog. It says, "So I finally saw the Powerpuff Girls, the Power of Four. At first, I thought I would see this and think it's okay, but no, it was awesome. I like what they did <laughs> with this character, Bliss, and how they expanded on the professor's experiment and backstory." Yeah, and he wrote an essay about. Oh God, I'm not reading all this. Get out of <laughs> here. Get your ass out of here, boy. Oh yeah, um, James. For context, of um, <laughs> Nero's Q is our uh, our arch nemesis, I guess. He's, <laughs> I like him though; he's cool for the most part. Yeah, it, it's it's but one he, of those things where like, um, with this guy like Pan made a video about the Powerpuff Girls, and this other guy mm-hmm. like made this really long, lengthy, ranty video about Pan's review of the Powerpuff Girls. The reboot. And, oh, I, yeah, wait. Doesn't the guy have like chains or something? Isn't he? Yeah. Kind of yeah. I've seen that. The Todd McFarlane oh. guy. 
Yeah, he's <laughs> such an edge lord. And the amazing yeah. thing is, like, he, he talks about like you know doing all this stuff for kids and all this, and then like immediately murders the people that he's critiquing. He's like, hey, I don't <laughs> want swearing on here. This is for the kids. But yeah, he just has like he ends every video with like chopping up somebody with a scythe and like chains and yeah. I don't know. It's super cool. It's basically. like, hey, Todd McFarlane, get your kid here. You know, and so naturally we brought him onto the podcast. Yeah, it was a good idea. <laughs> oh man, he had a voice changer. He came on the podcast with a voice. Why? Changer. <laughs> I I heard his voice. I heard his true voice for a little bit because he he turned it off by accident, but it wasn't recorded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so just do an impression, I guess. It's so good. I, I can't I can't do an impression. He literally he sounded like a like a younger kid, like a. Like a he's just got out of puberty, like type guy. Aw, that's that's something that I tell people when they have to. They they ask like, how do you deal with hate comments? I tell them just imagine that it's being said by someone who hasn't gone through puberty yet oh. because it's not that far off. That's not funny. <laughs> my voice is normal. Jesus fucking Christ! Uh, oh my God! Look, it's normal to be my age and not go through through the puberty yet. Okay. Oh, that was Stephanie. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, speaking of puberty, does anybody have any fun puberty stories? I uh, don't. That's not where I thought you were segueing <laughs> to. Oh, no, yeah, I'm, I, I'm all about subverting expectations. Oh, Hawk and Hawk in the comments story. says, Stephanie, you suck. Wait. Oh, Sex ed uh, story. Yes, tell the sex ed story. Okay, cool. So you guys all did sex ed in like fifth and sixth grade, right? It was we were in sixth grade and the teacher was telling us about like what sex was. And she was reading off this pamphlet and then she, she gets to the part where she talks about the, the penis and the vagina connecting, mm -hmm. right? She gets to that part. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is and, a and the whole podcast. Oh, I know. And then the, <laughs> the, but the whole class was just like, oh, and then when she said that, they all like were oh, like cheering and stuff. And I didn't hear what she said. And I turned to my friend and I said, what did she say? My friend was just like, no, I'm not going to say it. And so I didn't know what sex was for longer than I should have, basically. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, neither did I. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I also find puberty, like, super interesting, too, because it's like when you start sexually developing, you, like, that's when your kinks start coming to the forefront. Like, there are people who are, like, into, like, ASMR, or, like, weird stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, weird. Like, um, wait, James, wasn't there a channel we were talking about that you wanted to mention? <laughs> um... Let me, this, let me read this comment. Not ASMR. Hey, hang on. <laughs> I, I just want to read this comment. Uh, Scrag Leman says, I laughed at the video of a wiener getting erect in fifth grade and got kicked out of class. We've oh. all been there, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah James, um, um, James, you were saying mentioning something about like some type of weird video that was kind of like ASMR. Th this is like totally off topic and not about animation. And probably I shouldn't be saying this. It don't this, matter. But there's this... There's this channel, I guess if people were, if they stuck around the song, they get this little juicy treat. There's this channel called Spirit Channel, and there's a there's a guy named Psychic Bob, and he does Ouija boards, seances, and spell casting right on YouTube. Shit. You know, he's like summoning spirits on YouTube. Did, and <laughs> Did Silent Bob become a mage now? No. Oh. No, he's, he's a bit. Oh, okay. He's like in his 40s. And he 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 seems super nice. He seems like a very lovable guy. He, and he'll just be like, uh, in videos, just be like talking about just like random things, like oh today it's really great, the weather's really beautiful. And then he'll say something that's just completely out of left field. He'll be like, oh today's really good to go watch for some aliens. Let's see if we can see any uh, some space saucers today. And it's just like oh psychic Bob, you do you. I thought I thought yeah. for the long I thought for this little bit you said um silent Bob and I was gonna make a joke like oh did he finally catch Bart and then like you said um psychic Bob and I was like oh my joke is ruined yeah well, that's why I said did silent Be Bob become a mage now that's why that, that was the joke I said oh you know oh I get I get, I get it now I thought, yeah I thought you were my saying like, like he casts spells yeah <laughs> so should, like should, ASMR you should have you should have said, did Silent Bob become a psychic now? That would have worked better. Well, but... Mage has those powers, I'm sure, in D&D, &D, no, maybe. No, no, it doesn't. You, you're you're mm -hmm. stupid. Is I'm he? Is he? Trying. Keep talking so pan, pan. 
Okay, so, like, my roommate apparently watches ASMR videos occasionally. Like, she is the uh, – I, I, the more I talk to her, the more I find out that, like, she watches all that YouTube drama stuff. And, like, she is, like, patient mm-hmm. zero as far as, like, YouTuber – like, YouTube fans go. Mm-hmm. Like, she just eats up all of it. And then I find out she watches an ASMR video to help fall asleep in which it is a kidnap role play. <laughs> yeah, those exist. <laughs> oh. I don't know how I mean, it works or anything like that, but I just found that really fascinating, and I like telling that fact. You know, if you uh, set up two, okay, I got two microphones here, and well, not not right now, but if you set up two microphones and you have them on at the same time, and each Where goes, be? yeah, each is one is left ear, one is right ear. You can do some pretty good uh-huh. a- ASMR stuff, you know. I've always I've always wanted to like record a video with with a binaural recording hmm. just, just to see how it is. <laughs> that will, it would be annoying unless you're doing the ASMR thing, but yeah, it would be pretty cool. All right, this is the ASMR part of the podcast. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? What's hey, going, going on? on? Oh, oh, <laughs> softer, <laughs> softer, man. Softer. What's going on? And talk like you're masturbating and you don't want your mom to hear. Shut up! Everyone. <laughs> Hi, it's me. Yeah. Everyone, get in the back of my van. This is a kidnapping. I'm kidnapping on you. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Don't, don't hurt me. Oh, man. Don't hurt me, James. Yeah. James, 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 mm-hmm. kiss me in the mouth. Uh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me get something here. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Soft sounds. Soft, gentle sounds. Guess who's come that was. And uh, this ends the ASMR portion of the podcast. Thank you. Yeah. Well, guys, guys, did we just get interrupted by some kind of weird podcast or what happened? Like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I mean, <laughs> I mean we can also have a jo- – people in the comments are saying, hey, we can have a joy jerk-off session, you know? <laughs> Where it's like, jerk-off it's instructions. Like the, it's, like, it's like the – it's like the you guys- yummy, yummy pizza thing. Hmm. We, we, wait, what? That? Yummy pizza thing? What? It's where it's where it's this video of like these guys dressed up in like ninja costumes, except they're all made out of duct tape, oh, like green duct tape and stuff. Oh. And it's a circle jerk on a pizza, and it's like it's like obviously <gasps> like a can of ranch or something. <laughs> oh. Um, and meanwhile, the song go- it goes yummy, 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 yummy no. pizza. No, yummy, yummy, yummy. I don't know that video. No, thank I've you. I've seen it. Why? Why have? Why does that video exist? And why have you guys seen that video? <laughs> I, I think the better question is what video haven't we seen and why? Because that's probably better than the stuff. We- Sad, terrible. But um, <laughs> the world is amazing. Hmm. Remember the, the 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 Ninja Turtles porn parody, funded by April O'Neil Actually, herself. I don't. I, oh, um, there's this company called um, Wood Rocket. Rocket something. Wood Rocket. Wood Rocket, and they like they've been doing a lot of like parody stuff, like uh, the Muddy Muff Pounders <laughs> instead of Power Rangers, and uh, the Teen Ten Inch Newton Ninja Turtles, and like they're, they're clearly not like actually like things you're gonna watch because you care about porn. So like it's it's all kind of like it's 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 humor, so it's subjective. But a lot of it is like really funny. Like the trailer is great. It's on YouTube. Like the funniest thing I've ever heard is Splinter being like, "And I'm a furry." Oh. <laughs> Hmm. But it's just I, I, I love. I honestly, legitimately love porn stars because they're they just like having fun. They don't care. Just <laughs> do whatever. One of my favorites is Asa Akira because she was on Great, of course, and she's just going with it. And she just keeps making jokes about the industry and stuff. She was really funny. <laughs> Let's get Asa Akira on the podcast. Shout out, hashtag Asa Akira PPP. I don't know who that is. Yay. I had a I had a porn star follow me on Twitter one time. Whoa. Not even like a bot, like a real one. Oh, which one? Um, I didn't look up her name. Oh, because oh. like you, be, I mean, like it's one of those things where we don't realize this, but like so many people watch YouTube stuff, not just like quote unquote normies, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, so like every like bigger, um, like bigger, I, I don't want to say celebrity or influencer because it's <laughs> dumb words, but like. You know, I, I mean, I mean, a lot of people that are into that stuff, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh yeah, I watch John Tron," or "Oh yeah, I watch so and so," and I'm like, "Really?" Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, if for whatever reason, I want to believe that people that do things are above YouTube, but no, everyone just loves <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, um, Mary Kate Ashley probably watched Fuller House review and laugh because everybody hates Fuller House, even Aww. like fans of the show. I like Fuller House. I don't know why. It's 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 a it's an illness. Oh, 
it is an illness, oh. you should get checked for it. Oh my god, okay. guys, hang on, update. Uh, there's, I see there's a Twitter where people are chanting, we want the sauce at outside of McDonald's. Sweet. Wait, you guys know Szechuan sauce? Those... I want Szechuan sauce! Where's my Szechuan sauce? I'm Kendall Rick! What will I'm Dum Dum? I'm Kendall Rick! What the heck? <laughs> what? <laughs> did, did you did you guys see that guy? Yeah, I got the whole video. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, let it make your okay. own teriyaki sauce. No, right. no. Right. Okay, okay. even if you're protesting, you're not going to get the sauce today. Shit, like they, they, they you know, they, they ship the stuff, yeah. they're not going to like go in the back of the kitchen and make it package and do all the things. Like, you're just not going to get it. Uh, up to someone in the Twitter says, apparently, some people jumped the counter and stole a handful of Szechuan sauces. I, I don't know if that's true or not, so you know, take that for a grain of salt, but I want to believe. <laughs> they stole the entire stash then. <laughs> yeah, look, you can only carry yeah, like a handful. All 20 of them. You know, no one's carrying like a. Listen, guys, listen, we're just not smart enough to understand their method. You know, have you ever seen a photo online of someone dipping their balls in Szechuan sauce? That was messed up. I saw uh, that. What? Nothing. <laughs> so, moving on. Um,. Did you guys know that I'd, uh, I'd kill a man for some hot Cheetos asteroids? Just just buy <laughs> che hot Cheeto puffs. They're no, the same thing. I want the one in the canister. You know those are cool. Put it in a thermos. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I want a, you know what? I want a Fenton thermos. You know, like Danny Phantom. Like they should make that a real product. A Fenton thermos. Like Hot Topic should sell that. Have you guys seen? Have you guys seen Rick and Morty? Like the whole third season? Oh yeah, I thought I love the just present saw, episode I just saw the finale, and also the YouTube channel I follow that post war time post a divorce scene from that season that was pretty cool. Uh. <laughs> so like, I don't know how I feel about season three of Rick and Morty. Like, I I like that mm -hmm. it's all like th there's like an ongoing storyline going yeah. throughout each episode. That's cool, but. Um, does it feel like the show is just kind of like trying really hard to impress at this point? I feel like the problem is like shows at a certain point when they start getting really popular, start buying their hype and they start catering to what the people like about the show, about mm -hmm. that show instead of what actually made it good. Mm -hmm. I think people, people have been complaining that like there wasn't enough story that, that they, they didn't really do the storyline. There was just like the divorce storyline and then the evil Morty storyline that like was only in there for like one episode and then all the rest were filler. Mm -hmm. but I think if you look back on like the first and second season, Rick and Morty has been mostly filler, you know? Well, uh, okay. We got, we got to like dis describe what filler means because like a lot of people tend to use filler as like some kind of word for less than good. Um, well, filler as in, it doesn't drive the, the main arc forward, you know? Right. But up until um, this season, there wasn't a arc. There wasn't like a ongoing storyline ever. Each episode was episodic. Mm -hmm. You're right. Like the, the only, I think the only thing that was like close to a, a storyline was uh, the the government of Ricks or whatever. I don't fucking yeah. know what that shit about. Ricks, but, yeah, the Citadel, yeah. and then the, the the evil Morty introduced, and then right. Okay, because so, so they they like occasionally would hint at like future things, mm -hmm. but then like they would also the next episode not address it, and it wasn't until. Um, the Cronenberg episode and then the the first improv TV show episode in which they acknowledge something that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Like like yeah. before that, before that point, literally any episode could have been a what if or, um, you know, nothing was canon to each other. Yeah, right. And even in the even now, puppy, uh, Mr. Poopy Butthole <laughs> is now like you can if you look in the background, you can see where. Um, he's actually was a character we just had not seen up until that point because um, there's like pictures of him um, with yeah. the family and such so like he exists like it wasn't like just a one off joke <laughs> yeah um, but I guess my biggest issue with the current season is oh, oh no no I wanted to specify with the evil Morty thing if anyone really thought uh, that they were going to jump back to it so soon. It took them a season and a half before they even addressed him again. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like it, you expected him this soon. The only way I could see you thinking that is if you watch film theory, where Dan <laughs> Harmon literally states that evil Morty is going to be in the episode. 
and that was really upsetting because I because I don't watch film theory very often because Matt Pat's awful as far as I just don't mm-hmm. enjoy his personality. And in that video, I was like, oh, Dan Harmon's in this. Cool. And then Dan Harmon's like, oh, if you want to find out about Evil Morty, uh, check out this episode. It airs now. And then it's like, oh, spoiler alert. Yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's just kind of like uh, I, I, I don't I'm, I'm honestly I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm sick of these all these cartoons attempts at serialization because it all seems to be the same thing like it's sort of like the sherlock syndrome where hey do you want to see this cool interesting thing happen stay stick around and you'll see it happen and then it like kind of like does a half committal payoff where it's like oh well uh that's not i mean that sort of happened but you should stick around and then you'll see something else yeah. happen mm-hmm. and it co- goes on constantly and there's no sense of resolution there's no end there's uh, no there's no definitive end to any of the arcs that are ever made it's just sort of a uh sort of like half committal oh this is going to keep happening eventually <laughs> yeah isn't that all shows or like all, a lot of things do that where it's well, like us I mean, watching well no no it's not it's like it's like there's a definitive end to an arc and then sure, they start right. a new story here it's like they have sort of half ended half like half-heartedly ended because like the council of bricks is still around isn't it yeah yeah no i mean yeah. they built the evil morty is now like the 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 leader of the leader. Yeah, yeah, so so the so the Council of Rick's things is still going. It's but it's just oh, we added a new character. What's going to happen next? Because like this because in the first the season three opener, the, I saw the beginning and the end of the season three, and it was like oh well, uh, the Citadel's gone. So we have we can do new stuff now. But now it's like oh, we brought back R- Evil Rick. I mean Evil Morty, and he's going to take over the Citadel now. So it's like they sort of ended it, but they brought it back again, and they're sort of half sticking to it, which is what a lot of cartoons have been doing recently, like uh, Steaming Universe, Adventure Time, uh, basically anything that has a plot from like the 2010s. <laughs> it's sort of like this half committal. Oh well, that sort of ended, but it might come back. You'll have to stick around and find out. And then they keep trying new things. And all, and they just like it's just like so half-hearted, and it's like I I don't care anymore. I don't give a shit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I know it's never going to end until it ends. And when it does end, it's just going to be completely unsatisfying. Mm -hmm. I I trust the Rick and Morty team to make it satisfying, though. Here's my biggest issue with season three: is that all the characters are unlikable now. Like I feel like everyone's an asshole. Um, and don't get me wrong, uh, Beth is the most interesting she's ever been after the like the last two episodes. Yeah. Um, but that's not because of her personality. It's just because of the situation she's in. Um, Jerry's basically the same. So you, you can either like him or you don't. But like Morty's definitely like shifting into a more cynical character. And that that's necessary for his growth. But at where he's at right now, it just isn't like as enjoyable to watch as that like opened eye, bushy tailed version of him from season right. one. Right. You're right. Um, would you would you want would you guys want to watch season four? Where would you be interested in when the fourth season comes out? I'm in this deep. In like forty years from now, I'm sure it'll come out. <laughs> yeah, I I think that's one. There's like drawbacks and perks to these really long hiatuses where it's like on one hand it's like people could get interested in jump ship completely, but then on the other like people if like they'll they might forget about the stuff yeah. that happened and they'll be like, Oh yeah, I, I vaguely remember yeah, some of the details and they'll come back and then be disappointed again. Mm-hmm. 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 Also, it, it'd be mm-hmm. nice if they uh, start like, um, I no, I, I was going to say that it feels like they haven't been really using the portal gun that often, but they did in the Mad Max episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess the, um, the one where they go to the relaxation thing, but um, I don't know. It seems very like very it, with with, uh, with it being more focused on the characters themselves. It seems like we're staying closer to home yeah. more. I don't know. It, no. It's in a it's in a thing where it's like it's it's evolving. That's what that's what Dan Harmon does. You know, he tries to uh, go through and figure out what what was the best things of the previous season and move forward. And let's just hope that's going in a positive direction. You know. Mm-hmm. Like no one on the thing is writing things to make it worse. They're they're just trying to do the thing, and um, here's hoping that they listen to fan feedback. I, I feel like fan feedback, though, to an extent, is also a problem because while it is good to get feedback from people, I feel like fan feedback is such like a double edged sword because on one hand, you know, they're the ones financing your show in the end; they're the ones keeping you employed. But on the other hand, so, there there are some fans who probably don't understand like 
the real oh, core appeal of the show or like understand why it's so good and all because there are like core there's like like I think I think of shows like Planets where there are levels to like the appeal of a show and I'm not trying to be pretentious even though I don't sound like it but like there's like a surface level appeal and then the, the deeper you go there's a core appeal to it which like really sticks with you and like really keeps it keep like that really sticks with you and I feel like a lot of people just like look at Rick and Morty's surface level appeal and it's like oh ha funny Back to the Future spaceman dude. And then, like, the core appeal is, like, I mean, what do you guys think the core appeal of Rick and Morty is? Because I'm not qualified to really. Well, when I first started watching it, I was, like, I liked how it was just parodying all these elements that were so overdone in sci-fi and stuff. So, I guess that mm. just Rick's, that's just that's the dialogue, true. yeah. I mean, like. The dialogue and. In... Yesterday, well, I think of, I think yesterday I just saw the uh, President episode where, uh. The finale, by the way. Yeah, the finale. the finale. I thought that was a really funny episode, and that had a lot. And my favorite parts were just <laughs> Rick being an asshole to the president and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, like that. That one felt very much like a season one esque episode. Mm-hmm. Um, except for at the very end, there's like this like three minutes of this tacked on plot line <laughs> that like kind of like the arcs don't really work very well in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Like as far as like the traditional hero's journey goes. Because um, it, it just usually Rick and Morty's best is, is at its best when the character's motivation arc also correlates with the um, the arc of the show of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was like an example where it's just kind of like Rick didn't change to like course correlate with the plot. It just it happened. They told him and. Um, it also felt like with them going, hey, it's going to be like season one. You could tell that like by the end of the, the season, Dan Harmon and the writers were just kind of like, OK, I don't think this worked as well as we thought it was going to. Yeah, I guess it was an experiment that failed on their ass. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel like that's a that's a fair point. I I do commend them for trying new stuff and, you know. Having the having just I mean if that is I I don't like meta a lot usually unless it's really subtle and like has a point. Mm-hmm. I, that joke at the end rubbed me the wrong way, but when you put it like that, I feel more into it. Like oh, okay, I could see how that that's what they meant by it. Hmm. I mean that's just my assumption because it's like out of nowhere, you know, we just finished the season. The very last note they say is, "Hey, you know, we're going back to what it was. It's going to be different yeah. than." Uh, okay, this is what's going to happen. If it's anything like any any other show Dan Harmon's worked on, he's going to say he's going to change, and then it's going to fall. It's the first two episodes of the next season. It's going to be that, and then immediately it's going to go back into what it's going to do. If it's anything like Community, because Community, there's a lot of like similarities between how these seasons are going. With season three of Community being one of the darkest, yeah, because they, like they were trying really hard to like up the ante, do more uh, story based stuff. And then immediately they're like, crap, this is, you know, you jump into season five. We're like, all right, we're trying to reset this. Go back to go back where we were. And then immediately episode three, they're already back into season three again. <laughs> you just don't like the uh, storylines, I guess. Is that what it is? Or I, yeah. No, I, mean, I like the storylines. I think my biggest issue is the fact the characters are unlikable right now. Oh. Like they're just assholes. Well, I, I mean, they're. I, I can see why. Well, they're developing and just like they're in a horrible place right now. So I guess I can understand why one line in the second to last episode where Beth was like, am I a bad person? And then Rick said like, no, you're smart. And I just kind of cringed a little bit because, because uh, <laughs> there's like a lot of, like a lot of the fans think they're like the, when we were joking saying that, Oh, you have to be intelligent to watch Rick and Morty. Like some people unironically think that. And so then when Rick was like, you're not a bad person. You're just smart. And it's just, I don't know. I cringed cool. at that part and made me, just like Rick a bit. You know, there's they'll, someone, there's, there, there'll be someone on like Tumblr or something just getting that quote and like getting that screenshot with that quote on the bottom and making it black and white and then posting it. And it's like, yeah. this is me. <laughs> yeah. The, but the problem is I can't tell if that's, I, I can't tell if that if that's the show's internal logic or if that's something the writers legitimately believe. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that could be just yeah. Rick. It doesn't have to be the writer speaking as Rick. Yeah, yeah but the, I mean, that's that's the problem. You need you need somebody to play off Rick like that, and they don't do that until season three finale. And even then, we still don't know whether or not like it, it, I don't can't tell if the show's identifying with Rick or like going against him, right? To a certain yeah. degree, because I I and on surface level, I'm inclined to say, oh, this show's finally getting Rick has come up. I think. Do you remember? Do you remember Pickle Rick? That one. Do you remember at the very end when he was at the therapist, and then the therapist kind of just like schooled him and and told him that he needs to take care of himself. 
I like I really like that episode. And the internet kind of ruined it because making Pickle Rick a little bit of a meme. Oh. But I, I really like that episode because uh, he's saying, like, no, Rick, you're wrong when it comes to the, the, the self-help or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's just like with the show as it is now, it's I think the their methods of writing is different. Because with the first two seasons, the mm-hmm. show wasn't big. Like, most likely they probably had – they probably were already midway through season two while season one was airing. Mm-hmm. and just because of how productions go and then now with season three there's a lot that's changed like it, to the point to where like dan Harmon's divorce is now featured at the end of every episode yeah at the uh after credits like he had that claymation thing with the you know right before it says you know crap the production studio thing the logos at the end you know yeah the you know that? the splash card it's uh it's yeah. now it was before it was him and his wife claymation and now it's him laying at the couch sad while dogs are kind of like sitting around him it's uh <laughs> it's it, it really it kind of shows there's been a change within behind the scenes not just like dan Harmon's personal life but like you know there is a difference of time that's passed between the first two seasons and the third and now they're writing to impress fans like they they have an audience and they feel like they're i think they might be like trying to write grander and sometimes the show feels like it's up its own ass because mm. of it mm-hmm. and there is a lot of talk in the sh- episodes about smart and like validating the character and someone in the comment section said something really really good it's uh they, the writers keep saying that rick isn't right but they never ever in the episodes show rick being wrong mm-hmm. yeah that, i think that's a good way to put it it's, it's it feels like again it feels like half committal like um, it feels like a internal power struggle between the writers, I think, because mm-hmm. when you have when you have a big staff like that, you know, it need a director to like unify everything and like get get the shit together, essentially. And that's a lot of shows don't seem to really have that these days from what I've been told and what I've observed. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like, obviously, there's a director. Yes. But there's like in showrunners and stuff. But it never feels like it feels like a very. uh powwowy like oh everybody's voice is like welcome or whatever and it's like kind of like you can't have that (laughs) when you're making a show like this you need to you need to be able to put your foot down and say like no uh you we need to do it this way and we need to have this have it go this way because when you have a a big staff of writers and you don't have somebody like writing the ship then you know it's gonna fall apart you're gonna have conflicting characters and you're gonna like have to deal with like fixing all that later and it just seems like something like that's been recent more than anything Mm -hmm. um and someone mentioned in the comment section about the the women fiasco um apparently there was it what's up i said i was i think that's stupid i don't think that affects anything there was a they have like women writers in the rick and morty team now Mm -hmm. women men Mm -hmm. i don't care i care about their credentials that's it so i was gonna say yeah but apparently, I don't think that's. I mean, it's like, were people complaining that that's cha- That's what was wrong with season three? Because I don't yeah, think the, they added women to the the cast, yeah. and so the the only way I'd see women being a problem is if like uh, if it's like a show that's specifically about like something that they weren't qualified to write about, or like, or rather the inverse of it. If it was a feminist show and then men writers, then I'd be like, okay, that could be a problem. Or if it's like something like that, but this is literally just oh, these these are all writers and they happen to be. It's just sort of like. I don't see I don't see the big deal. I don't think it was a political yeah. it's just like that's who they hired. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I guess technically Rick lost in the last episode because Jerry won. Yeah. But like it doesn't Jerry, feel it doesn't feel like it. Well, because there was no it wasn't part of the actual conflict of the episode. It was that extra tacked on two minutes and made it into a finale where all of a sudden Jerry, who did nothing in the episode, won. Mm-hmm. That like he literally did nothing. He he, he was a he was less of a character in that episode and more of a plot device. Well, to be fair, the one, I think the one thing that somebody pointed out that I thought was like, oh, that's a good point to bring up is Beth literally threw herself sexually onto Jerry, but instead of taking advantage of it like he would have, he decided to actually help her and help her understand. But I can't really comment on that that much because, again, I've only seen the season premiere and finale. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, no, I feel- that, that's pretty solid. That's that's a good, good way of looking at it. So, like, that, that was a... Um, that was a good, uh, character. I think that was a good, like, character, uh, that, like, a good character arc for Jerry was that, like, he, mm-hmm. this time apart from, uh, Beth helped him learn how not to be a complete and total tool. 
And but on the other hand, it's like, you know, will that stick? Will he still be the same character by the end of it? You know, mm-hmm. stick around for season four, whenever that is. Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now there's a now there's a video of inside the freaking McDonald's of people really chanting, "We want the sauce." It's getting worse. Yes, like the, 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 we're, we're bringing you the the coverage live on this stream. Like, what what's going on with McDonald's situation? <laughs> I can't believe that. Like, oh shit, that that's uh, there's gonna be a riot. Oh man. About a limited edition sauce. Okay, is, is um okay. Will McDonald's <laughs> get the sauce first, or will Puerto Rico get water first? What, what, what will happen first? I want to know. <laughs> um, Puerto Rico. I don't know. The president could be out there golfing while we're, we're, we're we have oh, a yes. shortage of a uh, fucking yeah. Szechuan sauce here. Yeah, Trump. Damn why it. aren't you helping what us with fuck? the Szechuan? This is the everybody on the everybody on the podcast tweet to Donald Trump. Um, fix the Szechuan. Give us um, the sauce. We voted for you for a reason. Damn it! By the time this comes out, do you think? There's like gonna be any updates with the, the oh, sauce? Man. What do you think is gonna happen in the next two weeks? Oh shit, you're right. Lot- if, if, if there is, no, well, if there is, like we have two weeks, Pan can just edit in like a uh, a disclaimer, like with a Microsoft stamp yeah. saying the sauce has been recovered, crisis mm-hmm. averted. We found it. We f- <laughs> sauce for everyone all across the world. <laughs> It's gonna be like the the parade scene in Batman '89 where Joker's on a parade and he's just throwing sauce at everyone. Although it's like hose <laughs> and it's like oddly phallic and he's just spraying sauce on everybody and it's just sexualized to hell. But uh, <laughs> God, I think that's all for the news. Yeah, I don't. Uh, what happened? I don't. I don't. This well, this past Bob's couple. Bob's Burgers is getting that... a movie in 2020. Eh. Oh, that. Little, I don't know. It's like, is that show gonna well, run like, that long? Is it gonna be animated? Yeah, I, I'm assuming it's gonna be animated. I assume show, unless they just get the actors and just have them in live action, that'd be messed up. Cool. Teen, Teen Titans Go is getting a movie. Oh yeah, Teen Titans gonna... Go with a theatrical movie for next year on 2018. Like, wow. Yeah. I wonder. How, I wonder how far along do they actually like have like storyboard or so? Do you think they're still like writing the script? up with an idea I, they're probably like oh shit we gotta that's coming out 2018 shit uh, write the script hurry go 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 <laughs> i mean like it's just craft supposed to get a movie like, what's coming a movie what craft supposed to get a movie crap Did i hear was that just a rumor minecraft <laughs> i don't know if oh, that's God. still happening they, I, I well, they, they've made a bunch of lore for it they might as well just make a movie hey, be done with weren't it weren't they making a five nights at freddy's movie it's yeah. it's like it's in development hell. I'm pretty sure oh. it was originally going to be by Warner Brothers, and then Five Nights at Freddy's died down. Oh shit, we can't work with this. Okay, because I I remember I saw like I someone it. making like a like I think it was the prop department who worked on um, uh, Trick or Treat and uh, what's that Christmas movie, Krampus, the Krampus yeah. movie. It's like oh that'll be cool. I mean I don't mm-hmm. care about Five Nights at Freddy's, but I would love to see that movie with the uh, the effects. You know like just. Yeah, you know, just Five Nights at Freddy in real life—that'd be pretty cool. Even though I don't care about the games, but seeing the mechanics in real life would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I guess maybe it's not happening. Who knows? I hate the Five Nights at Freddy games, but I so would be down for a live-action movie. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. No, it's just. Uh, I think the games are really bad because they're they're clearly they're not good games. Like they're more frustrating than fun. First, I think the first one is a fun game, but then they just copy and paste the formula and make it actively worse as time goes on. I don't know. I just I just didn't think it was like scary. I thought it was just more frustrating and anxiety. I guess I guess that's what scary is. But um, about yeah, the story is interesting. What's that? I was gonna I was gonna say like I I get that. I think I had everything talked about it. How that the bit like it was just a jump scare every single time. So you knew it was going to happen every single yeah. time. It was just a jump paper scare. bag simulator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and that was kind of an era where, like, a lot of indie games were going this, like, um, what I used a term for it. I made up one. Uh, spectator games. They were, they were all spectator. You know, you had I Am Bread, Five Nights at Freddy's, um, the, the dating sim games where, uh, you know, it's not – they're not really fun games. You know, they're not really – some of them aren't even games. They're just okay. things for someone to react to. They're fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're not fun to play. That. And that's, like, perfect for YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, that's, it's great, except for that also doesn't make the game developers money. Oh. <laughs> like, Finance of Freddy's did, because people were buying well, them I mean, to play them. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I think 
it like a, a let's player playing a video isn't going to make the or playing a video game isn't going to make the developer any money but it's like free marketing which is uh, invaluable which is going to make the game way mainstream and then people making merch and, and buying the game itself mm-hmm. right but these people were made so, so busy with the idea of like mm-hmm. people finding the game through the let's players that they weren't actually making good games uh, and yeah. like you can see that with I am bread did horribly like it, it, it didn't sell at all it was popular for like a, like two or three weeks mm-hmm. but no mm-hmm. one was going and buying because what's the point that's true I didn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody buys games anymore. We just watch them, you know? Yeah. Which makes me think of a, a tour, the tourism, but the tourism mode in games thing. Yeah. Like, I think I brought that up a while we, back. Well, I would love for a model viewer for video games or just like, I don't know, just like well, some games did have that, but like, I remember Jack two and three had, a model uh, I mean like a where you could look at uncharted, stuff the three or was it the special yeah the special edition on ps4 for uncharted one through three collection um they have a mode where you pause the game and you can look around but the problem is you're stuck locked around nathan drake and you can only go so far when you look around it's like oh well that's not, this ain't fun give me full power you know mm-hmm. well the problem with that is um the way certain games are built is that they'll load chunks of like since oh, yeah, the yeah, games yeah. are so big they'll load chunks of the level and then they'll unload them the farther you get from certain places. Like oh, yeah. that's how that's how the Sonic games work. Is that they load certain parts of the level at certain mm-hmm. checkpoints, yeah. and uh, if you don't, if you miss that checkpoint, like which is really it's really hard to do, but you can do it. It's possible. Like the level won't load, and you are just walking on like coding basically. <laughs> yeah. where I mean, you're just walking on invisible hitboxes. There's this uh, g- okay. There's this one good YouTube uh, web series called Boundary Break where they take the camera. Oh, uh-huh, I've seen yeah. that. They take the camera of like a 3D game and they move it around while the character stays in place. And it's like you see how a lot of strange development things go on behind the scenes that you don't think about. And it's like, wow, that's really fascinating for giving you just how games are made and just limitations they do. Like Undertale, apparently every frame of animation has like 118 errors or something. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like someone that called him out on it. It's like, hey, what's up with this? So there's like a little... um, like code window that pops up and like brings up all these like notes that are like da, 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 issue 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 and like he's just like i don't know how to code games mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah apparently undertale was coded very poorly yeah mm-hmm. but then again the game is like hon- honestly i don't want to like sound like a pretentious fuck but the game is really complicated because like there's so many fucking variables that change just through a single action. So I'd imagine that it's super hard to keep track. And I, and like, as an artist, like when I draw, like I don't always keep my layers clean and I always have a bunch of layers that probably I don't need, but I have them anyway. So it's like, I kind of relate in a sense. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean like I've been working with character rigs lately and for a while there, um, it was one of those things where it's like, Oh man, I have to keep everything on the same layer and such. But it's like, no, there's points where I delete things, cut off sections, move it around. Um, uh, sometimes I delete feet because they're not in the shot. You know, like it's just a bunch of stuff that like it. there's no right or wrong. Well, yeah. there's, there's wrong hard. ways of doing yeah. stuff, but no one cares as long as the, the end result I mean, is good. Same. Yeah. Same. Like I don't I don't label my layers. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. I think like there's I mean, when I'm making art, I'm like. This is probably unconventional and nobody other no one else probably does this technique, but I do it, so it works, so I guess this will do. Like if I although if I were to ever make a tutorial, I'm sure I'll be getting people saying, Yeah, you know you could just do this instead of that, you idiot. Oh, I, I have that teaching. Yeah. Like I I teach uh like intro to two D animation and like uh from my I don't upgrade Flash, right? Mm-hmm. Like I haven't used animate it until this point where I have this NDA project. Before I've been stuck with CS6, so there's a bunch of these changes, and like you know, one student's like, "Oh, couldn't you just do this?" And I'm like, "I not in the version I'm playing with." You know, granted, I teach mostly the principles of animation, and I don't teach flash specific stuff. Mm-hmm. So, because like, I, it's one of those things where I rather for people to know how to like actually frame by frame animate and then apply tweens and all that other crap, yeah. versus I, people I, who only know how to tween and then but they don't know how to make it look good. Yeah, I was. That's that's basically what my class was the exact opposite. Where my teacher only taught me tween. So but he taught me the principles, but he only taught me to apply them to tweens. And I was like, I have to learn hand drawing animation by myself, essentially. And I was well, like, and it was like a class. GG. <laughs> well, it's just one of those things where, like, okay, if I show you the shortcuts without showing you the proper way, you won't appreciate the shortcut. Yeah, I know exactly. I get you. Yeah. You know, you but, gotta, uh, learn, so you like, gotta know the rules to break them. You know, 
Yeah, I mean, that's 100% it. Like, um, okay, so the NDA project I'm working on right now, there's a couple of shots where I'm reusing assets from a shot that I didn't use. So it's really funny to bring in their, their like, rig animation and then, like, see how their layers have completely changed, moved around, or, like, they, they, they've, they like, like, for example, the arm and the hand, they separated them and put them on separate layers versus, like, mine, they're always the same layer. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very interesting to mix and match their their frames with mine and just seeing how drastically different everything is mm-hmm. it's super cool i don't know it's a nerdy thing yeah seeing people seeing people make art is always fascinating sometimes yeah, yeah. or or well i mean like like if it's just like a stream with like dumb music then i'm not interested but if like if it's like somebody actually talking about the process of making art or they're like discussing something about art that's, and it's like hell yeah i'm all for that that's a, it's a good way to learn as well i always like whenever i'm giving advice i tell people to look at uh, how other people draw so then they can get techniques and and figure out how other yeah. people do it mm. like like people I, I see people like come up to me and be like man i feel really bad about my art i feel like you know all these people improve and like do stuff and like they make great things and then I, and then mm-hmm. it's just like, well, why don't you just ask them? Like, I mean, yeah. I, I feel like artists, like, you know, some of them don't like having conversations, obviously, but I feel like if you ask them a question, they would answer it. Mm-hmm. I, I asked yeah. this guy who did, like, I was doing a boxing commission, like a commission, and I asked a guy on Twitter, I was like, hey, your boxing poses are really good. Like, can, do you have any advice? And he, he gave me some of the basic stuff, but he also said, uh, like, reference boxing poses, like, try to see which ones work the best. Keep Pay attention to the line of action. And I was like, that was really helpful. Thank you. So it's oh. like, so it's like, ask people. Like, th- we're not gonna, we're not gonna, like, say no or anything. Or the worst we'll do is probably just not ignore you because we're busy, but... My advice would be ask the people who aren't the, the leads on projects and ask the people that worked on shows that aren't like, you know, like are in the credits, but aren't like, you know, glorified because one, they're going to guarantee be really excited that someone noticed them. Aww. And so they're probably going to spend a lot more time with you, not only yeah. because they're excited to, that someone asked them, but also because they're not running around with their heads cut off because they're busy with all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's too. For um, people, people who aren't like showrunners or like um, big storyboard artists, for um like people who do like a lot of the background stuff that you don't notice like offhand unless you look for it like we'll probably be more inclined to answer you Mm -hmm. have you ever like seen some behind the scenes thing and heard like some really contrived way to do something because i remember i was watching like i I forget some info about i i think it was for some nes game and i think it was who's that guy who programmed nes golf i believe you know, um, Iwata. Iwata. I, I think it was Iwata, but, but basically, like, wait, 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 wait. That's that's what your frame of fre- your frame of reference for <laughs> Iwata or was it the guy or someone who made Kirby? I don't remember, but essentially, the point was it's not, it's, Nintendo Golf NES Golf was a uh, Satoru. I remember because the Switch has a uh, Easter egg where if you um, hold the Joy Cons and like do Iwata's uh, "Please Understand" or "Thank You" motion. It'll play a Satori Iwata sound bit, and you can play the golf game because that's the game he first programmed, I think. Uh, but okay, I think it was that or Kirby. But essentially, like, um, they didn't have a keyboard, so they had to like click on every text, every piece of like. Well, there was like a virtual keyboard on screen, so they had to use the mouse to just like click on the letters and everything to type every single bit of coding ever. And it's like, oh, that sucks. But the, the I, I remember they said something like, oh. It, isn't it normally how you're supposed to do this? They, they didn't know computers were new, so you know they were dumb. <laughs> By the way, Kirby was Sakura, the guy, the guy Sakurai, Sakurai, Sakurai. 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 Yeah, Sorry. one of those. It was um, some some oh. did you know video, you know? Who, who, like um, everybody, I know yeah. um, Pan and uh, Izzy know, but James, do you know about Masahiro Sakurai to an extent? Um, I might. Who is he? He's he he's the Super Smash Bros. Uh, director and um, invented Kirby and stuff. Guy who made Super Smash Bros. And created Kirby. Yeah. yeah. Can, can we just talk about for a second why Masahiro Sakurai makes some of his fucking like design decisions? He 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 makes How so? he makes really weird fucking decisions in games. Like he took he takes out the uh the like first player single player mode in uh um Smash Bros. Four because I want fans to be able to experience like the uh cutscenes as a reward. So instead of doing that, he just makes them CGI trailers online, and it's like instead he puts in a, a shitty board game that's like 
worse like Mario Party. <laughs> and it's like, why? Why would you do that? Like, I think people play the adventure mode because they wanted to play the adventure mode. Yeah. <laughs> well, that the, the big thing was. Uh, well, the big thing was he didn't want um, people going on YouTube and watching the cutscenes. But so, but the he does the CGI trailers. They're doing the exact same thing. He didn't want them doing it anyway. Yeah. Well, it just I I wanted the story mode. I enjoyed the story mode. I, I did I, too. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of friends in real life. Like you know, like <laughs> at low, I don't have a lot of friends that like I actually with? bring over and do couch co op. So like. I like having an intimate single player experience and I like games that have single player experiences. So like Splatoon, I really enjoy the fact that they added a single player experience, you know, Mm -hmm. like that makes me happy. Yeah. But, but also he also does really weird, like in game stuff that makes no sense in um, Kid Icarus uprising. There's this boss. It's after uh, the pyro dude who's voiced by Troy Baker. Bless be to him. Uh, who um, like gets possessed by these aliens, and you have to fight him. And like Pit can't jump regularly. He doesn't have a dedicated jump button. If you want to jump as Pit, you have to equip a weapon, like a slot item slot to him, so he can jump. But there's an attack that you have to avoid by jumping. So the solution to this is. Um, you have to run to the jump pad in the middle of the arena to jump, like a spring, basically. So mm-hmm. my question is, why the fuck would you make an attack you have to avoid by jumping and, like, you can't do it instantaneously? Because the attack, like, the the wind-up is, like, a second. And, like, you, so you have a second react before the attack launches and then a, another second or two before the, like, attack comes to your arena. But why, 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 God damn it. Why would you do that? Why? That's awful. That's terrible <laughs> game design. I don't understand why you would do that. And his games are like chock full of stuff like that. Like, like tripping. all these, re- yeah, tripping. Well, tri- tripping. <laughs> the tripping in Smash Bros. I'm kind of with. Like, I feel like that should have been a function that could be turned mm-hmm. off. But I always, I always thought of that as Sakurai just being a dick. Like he knew people would get upset by that, and he sort of has a halfway contempt to the Smash Bros. fan base, so he did that on purpose. At least that was my that was yeah. my reasoning for it, but. Then he also has like all these modes, like, huh? I said, I said, I do agree that should have been something that they turn off, but yeah, continue. Um, there, there was just like he just is, has all these asinine game design decisions, and then he like goes to the guy who wants to help balance, which he rightfully. I'm not saying he shouldn't have, but on the other hand, he goes, "Have you made a game before?" And then I think of some of the stuff he's done, and I'm like, "Have you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because again, again, all this design decision fucking weird mm-hmm. and he just and, and some of them are just don't make I, I just can't think of any logical reason why he would do it mm. but yeah hey. I, despite you exclusively yeah you. So, just maybe, to you. like at, maybe, at the very yeah. end he just says fuck you nolan <laughs> yeah <sighs> but um what were we talking about oh yeah i don't know Cuphead. Cuphead, yeah. Cuphead. Cuphead. What a cuckhead. <laughs> what yeah. Watch Cuckhead getting cucked. Yeah. Or like Cuckhead by Satan. I think right? this is the first and only cartoon video game that people actually like. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, because there's like cell damage and all these other cartoony games, go go hyper grind, and they got mediocre reviews. But here's finally a game with style and substance after all these years. One. Wait, how the <laughs> fuck did you compare cell damage to to Cuphead? Because cell damage is like sort of based around car- cartoons and stuff, you know, it has that rubber band physics. Right, but it's not animated in the same sense. Yeah, it's, 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 it's still it's, stylized. It's still shaded 3D. It's still stylized around cartoons and and the aesthetic, you know. Let me let me let me go- double check this. Yeah, but like, it was a if one. I remember the game, it was supposed to be like Wacky Racers meets uh, Twisted Metal. You know, I made a video on it. I know, I know you did a video, but it's such a, like a weird that, that they're like so different in in style. Yeah, they're cartoons. Tone. Why not bring up Sly Cooper? Oh, okay, yeah, that that too. Which, by the way, did sell well, so that Shit. defeats his argument. Well, no, damn. it did not. It, the, uh, Sly, the Sly Cooper games have always sold like moderately okay to like mediocre. Like uh, Thieves in Time did not do well, but I attest that that was the wrong place at the wrong time because now all these platformers are coming back. Mm-hmm. So if Sly were to come back, it would have sold probably pretty well. But 
Well, I'm just saying there's four of them. Like it, it didn't. It, I mean, it's not a failure by any regard compared to like cell damage we got. Like, okay, I was thinking about doing like a top ten cartoony video games. And I'm like, okay, what what justifies a cartoony video game? Like, I mean, Mario yeah. is cartoony, but I'm what? I'm speaking of like cr- cartoon exactly. stuff. You know, like I I think uh, I think what I think what you should do is like specifically a cart a game that emulates the aesthetics of a cartoon, yeah. like a traditionally animated cartoons like while mario is cartoony it's not actively emulating the aesthetics of a cartoon yeah right like i think a better comparison for cuphead would be Skullgirls. yeah yeah definitely yeah even though skull girls is made by a pervert weeb don't be mean to alex the hot he drew me a wave bird and forgot to draw breasts so you know <laughs> why don't you just uh, ask why don't you just make sure he drew best why didn't you say beforehand oh yeah please give her big titties you know, or uh, how about Hollow Knight? That one's also frame by frame. You mean animated. Shovel Knight? No, no Hollow Knight. What the fuck is Hollow Knight? How do you? Okay, I um, don't know every Hollow game Knight ever is... made in the history of the universe. I I just really like the company, and they occasionally like talk to me on Twitter. It's nice. Oh, I see. They, made, um, they they wrapped up Hollow Knight, so they get a a gold star in my book. <laughs> they did. They did actually. Hollow Knight is this like um, Castlevania, Metroidvania hmm. style game where. You explore the underground, you're a little bug, and it's really adorable. And it's like, it, it's like an adorable, like if Tim Burton stuff was actually cute. I like how we we still don't know have don't have a name for Castlevania or Metroidvania. Like, <laughs> we don't have a proper name. We just call it Metroidvania. That's a proper name. I mean, it's like if we call platformers I- Sonic. Mm- Sonarios. S- no, Somari. Somari. Yeah, why don't we just call first person shooters uh Doominize or something, you know? <laughs> Doofenstein. I, 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 I feel like they should be called like adventure RPGs or okay, something okay. like that. Or like all first person shooters will now be called Doominsteins. There. Okay, I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. Doominsteins. Yeah. Fuck everyone. We, we all agree the whole world. Um, yeah. Hmm. Race car games. What, what do we call race racing games? Um, uh, karting. K- mar- kart. Kart turismo. Kart turismo. Nice. <laughs> yes. All racing games are now called kart turismo games. <laughs> oh, by the way, do you don't feel like we're like overshadowing you, James? Do you? Yeah. What do you mean? No, it's fine. Oh, well, let's, well, no, let's talk about James. Yeah. James. Is, 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 he, is, he, is he, I like how you how you ask James specifically, and yet every other guest we've ever had, other never asked. Look, we, he's got a million subscribers. we got to make the use out of him. You know? <laughs> you gotta, we got to squeeze. You gotta, we, you gotta make me feel nice. We gotta, Someone in the comic session said, poor odd one. Listen, out. I did not I did not ask the odd ones out to be on because of the subscriber count. I asked him on because I thought he was nice and cute. Because I'm a good person. Personally. I have a question for you, James. Go for it. How do you feel about sparking what appears to be a trend amongst uh, story time slash animation channels in which everyone has white skin, pure white skin? <laughs> oh. as, 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 as pretentious as it sounds, I really like that I'm starting I'm, – I'm making kids put effort into their videos instead of just the, like the millionth Minecraft channel. You know? Yeah. Like I, I think I'm inspiring kids to like draw, which is – a pat on the back, but yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, that was not my question. <laughs> I did not like well, did that answer. answer what I, said. I am not Danger yeah, Dolan. <laughs> how do I feel about starting this new wave? Is that you're saying? Oh, well, it's it's just like this weird trend where like um, it seems oh, like everyone, skin. every other channel I've run across that's like animation is um is like the character is literally just like pure white. Like that, they don't. Be they don't fair, do skin and I'm not. Anymore. I'm not. I'm not shifting the blame or anything. But I got the white skin from Domix, so <laughs> you should ask him. <laughs> now no, so call we need to bring for Domix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Delete your channel. Yeah. Unsubscribe. Was there an episode of the Beatles episode of Powerpuff Girls? Wasn't there a scene where Mojo says, "Well, they're asking him like, why are we buying buying stuff that's just white?" And Mojo says. Because it's all right, because it's all white. And it's like, um... <laughs> I mean, I think that's a Beatles clarify, reference. I think there was... There was... What? Uh, to clarify, when I say white, I don't mean as in Caucasian skin. I mean as in, Literally like, white. pure... 
color yeah, white. Literally. Yeah, literally. Um, someone no, told me on Twitter that it was because um, the default color and flash behind everything is white. So that was just kind of, you know, it's white paper. So it's just a character that has no color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know if it's like a lazy thing. It's just style. It, seems, it thing. seems like an inclusive stylistic thing. Like it, they're, blank, they're, they're blank slates <laughs> to project like yourself onto. That's the idea. I, I still shade my white skin, so I'm still going through and, and coloring it in white. They're technically you know? blue. I'm not leaving it. Yeah, they're blue. <laughs> Okay, Pan. Sure. Sh- Look, white people are, are peach skinned, so it nothing makes sense. Although, so I have my characters; they're naked, right? Uh-oh. They're not wearing clothes. But then, say if they're like one of the characters needs to be black or something, if I make the skin like all black, it looks like they're naked, and so I always have to give black characters clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a Sonic. It's like the female Sonic characters. Hmm. <laughs> Although I always find it weird because like Lego, like all their characters are yellow. And then whenever there's a black character, like suddenly now we have like regular skin colors. Like what's going on here? Like a, a black person can't be a yellow Lego. What's, what? Should we make them purple? Like like, <laughs> like in the Simpsons, um, should they have just like any black character should have been like purple or some like blue? Hmm, maybe. I mean, like the Asians are like white in the mm-hmm. Simpsons. I think, or just like pasty white. I'm not sure. What's what's the deal with the twins okay. in the Simpsons? The, uh, the 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 those two purple twins, uh, Sherry and Terry, are they dying or are they just Asian? I like to think they're just dying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone <laughs> in the Simpsons is dying. I like to I like to think it's like dead Bart. Oh no, where it's like where Bart is like they're dead really. And he's like Sherry and Terry are really those twins from uh, The Shining. Come play in with the... us, Bart. Forever like, and ever. I have never seen anyone like draw them as stalking from Penny and stalking. Like, like that looks like them. Anyway. Anyway. Now I'm picturing Penny and stalking drawing in the Simpsons style. It makes me very sad. Oh. No. Well, it could be worse. It could be Family Guy style. Simpsons still has some it's, style. Sims, yeah. Well, Simpsons Simpsons started it, and then Family Guy aped it and made it worse. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Honestly, The Simpsons has inspired so many current styles. It kind of makes me a little upset. Yeah, because like a pe- I remember we had a, a freaking uh, Spencer Rothbell on the podcast, and he was saying like the CalArt style. It's really you should just blame The Simpsons and not CalArts because this CalArt style kind of started from The Simpsons. It'd be really cool if someone did an animation in which um, they like shift different art styles by switching to different shows. So like, uh, you know, Gravity Falls Didn't... eyes are like separate, like they're, they're, they're together, I think, like The Simpsons, but there got to be like a show that's in between the two of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember people when Gravity Falls first came out, uh, somebody posted a comment saying, yeah, the art, the humans in Gravity Falls look like the humans in regular show, which is kind of true. Although regular <laughs> show is more doodly looking like they, they look... Like they just spend two seconds on the drawing and they're done. Yeah. Wasn't there, there was some, I feel bad for not knowing the name, but there was some cartoonist or some showrunner who would get like three artists. One would draw the head, one would draw the body, one would draw the legs and they wouldn't see, they wouldn't see what the other person was drawing. And then that would just be like a background. Yeah, they did that on Flapjack. I, I think people called it the exquisite corpse concept where that's what it's called so that's character design kids yeah you guys want to get into the questions sure how do you feel about being uh, uh being shipped with the Jaden animations <laughs> questions if anybody has a question be sure to post your question in the youtube comments of this youtube video and start out with the word question so it's easier to find so our first question comes from hang on let me uh hmm oh Wonderfig says, question, what do you think of Toys R Us going bankrupt? I thought they were too expensive anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> this bankrupt is just a restructuring. I think, is nah, I'm... they're fucked. Well, they're yeah. probably, they, I, well, okay, Here, here's the thing about bankruptcy. My dad went through bankruptcy um, and his business got liquidated. That's one bankruptcy. There's another type of bankruptcy where you're, um, 
where your business gets reorganized and reshuffled, you let go employees, you restructure how things work. That's what happened to Don't Nod, who made the Life is Strange series, and that's really popular, and that got them out of the gutter. So there's different types of bankruptcy, and what's happening with Toys R Us, to what I understand, is that they uh, are going through um, judicial reorganization, I think. They're right, because they're not closing. Business. Yeah, like there, there's literally none of the Toys R Uses are going like, you know, doing a clearance sale and just getting out of there. They, they all are still mm-hmm. opening. No one lost their jobs. So, like, I don't think they're, quote unquote, they're fucked. No, nah, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, childhood's dead. Um, it's over. The other the other thing also is like uh, Trump has gone through multiple bankruptcies with his businesses, still considered a successful businessman. So make up that one will. Damn. And that's not me coming. That's not me like having like a anti Trump agenda or anything. That's just a legit fact that he's closed multiple businesses out of bankruptcy. Damn. I hate when Izzy brings up Trump on the podcast. Let's go on, Izzy. Yeah, thanks a lot, Izzy. Why'd you bring up You're Trump? You're Izzy, you fucking... asshole. Hey, if I'm Izzy and you're Izzy, and that's Izzy, who's driving the podcast? Oh no, Bear's driving! Ah! <laughs> Are there any more <laughs> Izzy's I should know about? Meow. <laughs> but, um, hey, you guys remember a long time ago during 90s Nickelodeon when, um, they would they would have this promotion where a kid would win a pro- win the thing, and it said, "Hey, kid, here's a cart. Uh, run through Toys R Us and get as much stuff as as you want under the time limit, and go through the through the finish line, and you win all these things." It's like I always wanted to win that, you know. You just wanted to just stuff your cart full of anything you can. Yeah, fit. mostly I'd go to the video game aisle and just <laughs> shove it down with sixty four games, you know. It's like that was the dream, but uh, they- <laughs> I remember those. Didn't Chris Chan win one of those? Mm, did did he? Yeah, Chris Chan won for KB Toys back with oh, uh, Sonic in right. the Morning. What, that's the right. Of the uh, that's the thing that happened. That's yeah. history. Yeah, shit. Like, that's part of his uh part of his legacy. That was his first time appearing in the public. Oh man, yeah, classic. Hmm, but um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess the if if Toys R Us does go down, I guess we can blame iPhone apps for ruining everything. Fuck Why? you, yeah. iPhone. Yeah. Like, even, even as even as a kid, I always thought that Toys R Us was expensive. I was like, oh, forty dollars for like a little yeah. toy, like the, stupid millennials ruining everything. The, Took down another business. Who the fuck spends thirty dollars on a vinyl figure from Kid Robot? What the heck? I would. I I'm stupid. I'm like mixed <laughs> between Toys R Us because, like, on one hand, they're literally the only like company that like picks up certain things, like the, uh, Ben Ten, for example. Uh, during Omniverse. It was like essentially a Toys R Us exclusive or online because Walmart and Target wouldn't touch it because mm-hmm. um, the a- ultimate alien toys did horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, so like Toys R Us is kind of like one of those places that if you can't find it anywhere else, it's probably going to be there. Yeah. I know they have t- Toys R Us exclusive uh, Teen Titans Go merch. So, you know, I want to bu- I want to get some Jinx and Blackfire <laughs> pop figures, you know. They're doing uh, mystery minis with the Disney Afternoon cast, and they have Morgana. Morgana the Spell from Darkwing Dark. Dark. I need it. Darkwing Dick. <laughs> Hot dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nolan, we told you no masturbating on the oh, podcast. Oh. I can do whatever I want. James, you have to look at me or I can't come. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> I get like that. I'll just close my eyes. Sometimes <laughs> I have a... James, I don't know. James, look at me. Oh. Sometimes I'm like scrolling through my special folder and I need a character that's making eye contact. But anyway. Please. Also, Magica Dispel <laughs> is. Oh, sorry, I mispronounced. Magica Dispel's DuckTales. Morgana McCobb is. Or McWeb. Or it's. I forgot the last name, but Mag- Morgana is Darkwing Duck's mm-hmm. girlfriend from the later seasons of Darkwing Duck. What the fuck are you talking about? Someone said it's Magica Dispel, and I'm like, no, it's Morgana. They, they made a Morgana toy. Hmm. She's she's the witch from Darkwing Duck. She she helped Goslin sell Darkwing Duck's soul to yeah. the devil, so she can have magic powers for That's one episode. Cool. Okay, okay. Well, I don't know the so. Hmm. Okay, I'll just be quiet over here. Yeah, you should. Yeah, be quiet, Izzy. Be quiet. Sit down. Why do you always bring up Donald Trump on the podcast? Why? Why you gotta be so rude? 
You know what? You know. You know what? You too, Pan. Oh. Why? Why? Why you always t- you talk about shit people already know? Oh. And you, James, you're pretty cool. Yeah, and like James, you. this is your fault. Oh, thank you. And Nolan, Nolan, why do you always talk about being gay? What was that? The fifth time you mentioned it? The sixth? The seventh? Or maybe the eighth? How long is this gonna go on? This podcast should be canceled. Hey, Nolan, didn't you watch <laughs> the My Little Pony movie? Oh yeah, I did. Tell us, tell it? us about the pony movie. How was it? I I went in to watch it as a joke. I literally walked up to the ticket taker and I said, "I'm the talk first movie." And the mom who went to go see it too laughed and said, "That was really funny." I said, "Yeah, I'm watching it for my review channel. I have about seven thousand subscribers." Like very, I, I said that very smugly too. Like I was, really <laughs> oh, how, <laughs> like you're the biggest person on YouTube. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. and my friend and my friend Spo was with me watching it. And he like he I literally like turned looked him dead in the eye as i said it like because i was challenging him because he hates when i'm cringy and he was like covering his face and he was super embarrassed and i like got my ticket i walked in ready for like this dumb me movie and i fucking loved it it was it was no it was really good it was like it had it was better than it had any right to be it does have pirates in it so it's got to be great oh. no it was it was i i was i was super happy with it like out of, I, out of 10 like ob- objective objectively speaking like i'd say an eight but like in terms of like how happy it made me like I, i'd give it a 12 like <laughs> no because like because i've been very jaded about animation recently because like there's just been it's been a hot mess <laughs> and uh but like seeing this movie that like that like it's it's six or seven seasons in and it's like it's part of My Little Pony, which is a franchise that's basically made yeah, to sell no. toys. And the fact that they like made a story that was like actually crafted pretty well. It wasn't like anything special per se, but like just just that they put effort into it and they like it was storyboarded with care and love and like you could tell they like they actually gave a shit about it. Oh my god, it was so good. And I see somebody saying better than it has any right to be. Oh, piss off by Zero G. I don't mean that because it's My Little Pony. I mean because it's a show that's like, I mean it's a movie that's taking place seasons in. The fan base has died. Like nobody really cares about it anymore. But like it was. I, I'm not talking about the fact that it's My Little Pony, movie, so you can like get off your high horse there. But um. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no. It, it was it, just because of like everything. All the odds were stacked against it, and it what, turned what out you fantastically. Like about it? And I couldn't. It, it actually had, like, a story with stakes in it, and it, like, the characters actually, like, are written very well. And it wasn't, like, it was, co- it had the core friendship moments, but it was also just straight up, like, yeah, the friends, like, get frustrated with each other, and they get upset, and, like, they have, mo- and, like, there was a moment where they, like, it was the third act, like, intro to the third act where the friends, like, part ways and stuff. But it wasn't, like, it was just, like, they got frustrated with each other because how, of how stressful the adventure was, and, like, everybody's personalities were kind of conflicting like friends do. And I thought it was really well written. And uh, they also like st- the, the storyboarding, the blocking in this movie is super good. There were a lot of like really dynamic, really interesting shots. And the animation was not cheap either. Like the fl- it was still flash, but it was like really gorgeous. Well done flash. Like they put in a lot of touches. Like they had the eyes sparkling a bit more and they had spikes like uh Head flaps, head fins, like transparent, which probably would have been more difficult to do in the show, and uh, all and like all the like one-off characters besides one were actually written. They like actually had arcs and were written well, and they were standard arcs, but they actually like put effort into them to make them like really interesting, fun characters and give them personality. But like, uh, it was so good, and it was like such a pleasant surprise because like all these animated movies are just like, especially like. Uh, like uh, the the newer Lego movies and uh, Emoji Movie, I'm used to seeing all these animated movies. Um, it really sucks, like it because they're all just ba- basic bitch shit, mm-hmm. and it's just lame. But <laughs> this movie actually, like, I could feel like there was passion behind. It. I really cared. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Okay, maybe I should um, watch it then. <laughs> <laughs> like, is he, like people are saying that all oh, people are like nitpicking my compliments to it like they're saying it's not blocking if it's animation like what the fuck no, it's still it's, it's still, still blocking, blocking. it's still you're blocking still, you're still like, like frame like, framing and stuff yeah it's still it's still like you're still making a movie yeah. like it's just animated 
Yeah. You just have a lot more control over it. <laughs> I just lo- I just love seeing the comments go by and some people are like trying to take up my compliments like, oh, well, it's like they're trying to nitpick me and it's just like, no, I just enjoy the movie, man. Yeah. But um, hmm. I didn't get to see the My Little Pony movie. Instead, yesterday I went to see Kingsman and <laughs> that was fun. But it's like, yeah, they brushed over a ton of things that should be more important. I mean, the original cut was two hours, no, three hours and 40 minutes, but they had to cut it down to two hours and a half. And it's like, oh, yeah, I see where they cut a bunch of stuff out. But I still enjoyed Kingsman, the golden circle jerk. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, not to be the bringer of bad news, but I have to show okay. some here soon. Yeah, so. we've been recording for two hours, so let's wrap this up. Hang on. Um, um last, last, let's just do one more yeah. question and keep it short. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, question: What do you think about Big Mouth? There we fuck. go. That'll be quick. It sucks. I didn't there. see it. I heard Did good it. things Who? from it. Some surprisingly. Who's Big Mouth? This new Netflix show Big about Ma- the Big Mouth. You know. It's about <laughs> it's about a bunch of kids going through. And it's basically like live action. I, I mean, it's basically like licensed child CP. I went, I went through puberty once. So yeah, we came full circle. Mm-hmm. The yeah. podcast started. The podcast started with child pornography, and it ends with it. Hey, so um, what what next video do you have coming up, uh, James? Um, so I have a video. It's at first it was going to be about school stories, but then Jaden already made a video on school stories, Shit. so I'm calling them Academy Anecdotes. <laughs> Ah, got him. Wow, that's really high class. Whoa. It still has the alliteration. Anyway, well, thanks for having me on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hope you had a fun time. Yeah, it was a fun podcast. I Sorry, sorry to wrap it up so fast, everyone. <laughs> no, I was my fault. I should have said something. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. Oh, well. All right, all right, gang. All right, but yeah. Y'all take care. All right, everyone. Wear your, Goodbye, every pony. Wear your seatbelt. He's got to leave. Ah. Bye. Oh. And we stopped recording. Okay. Off, 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 Mike James. Okay. I hope that was.